that. Team 62 from Chrysler Corporation. And by the Gillette Safety Razor Company, maker of the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. Remarkable super blue blades that give all but unbelievable shaving comfort. Foamy, the cream of all instant lathers. And right God, the new power spray deodorant for men. We're here in Wrigley Field, Chicago, and in a few moments we'll be all set to bring you the 33rd game in this All-Star Series. Whenever the All-Star game returns to Chicago, as it has today, it means that it's coming back home. Chicago is the city where the All-Star game was born 29 years ago, and Chicago is where the 33rd game will be played here at Wrigley Field, the home of the Chicago Cubs of the National League. And it was the National League Stars beating the American League All-Stars 3-1 to in this summer's first All-Star game at Washington earlier this month. The National League will have a chance to draw even today for the first time in history. At one time, the National League trailed 12 games to four, but now the National League has 15 victories, the American League 16 wins, and there has been one tie. In the last three games, the two in 1961 at Candlestick Park in San Francisco and Fenway Park in Boston, and the first game this summer in Washington, National League pitchers have been tough. They have held the American League All-Stars to a total of 12 hits, four in each of the three games. Both teams today are loaded with power. Both clubs have champion home run hitters, and the home run has dominated the series since its inception. The great Babe Ruth started the trend with a home run in the first All-Star game at Comiskey Park on Chicago's South Side in 1933. All-Star baseball was the brainchild of Arch Ward, the late sports editor of the Chicago Tribune. From the very first game, it has been a fence-busting success. It all started here in Chicago on July the 6th of 1933. That was the year of the Century of Progress exposition. It was billed as the game of the century. All the tickets were sold out in one day. And it was obvious from that moment on that baseball had itself another rich tradition. The first manager for the American League was Connie Mack for the National League's John McGraw. The stars that year, well, they included Gabby Hartnett, Chuck Klein, Lefty O'Doul, Paul Wainer, Mike Trainer, Bill Terry, Frankie Frisch, Carl Hummel, Pepper Martin, and Ruth, Gary, Jimmy Fox, Al Simmons, Joe Cronin, Goose Goslin, Lefty Grove, and Sam West. The American League won that game 4-2 as Babe Ruth lined a home run into the right field seats. Great names playing great baseball. That's what the All-Star game was in 1933, and it still is today. Right now, the American League All-Stars are being introduced, headed by manager Ralph Hopp, the manager of the world champion New York Yankees. Comiskey Park, the home of the White Sox, was chosen as the site of the original All-Star game over Wrigley Field by the toss of a coin. The flip took place in the office of Commissioner Kenneth L. Mountain Landis. Will Harridge, then president of the American League, yelled heads, and heads it was. So the first All-Star baseball game was played at Comiskey Park. The last time the game was played here at Wrigley Field was in 1947, and the American League won that one, too, by a score of 2-1. to one. The game returned to Comiskey Park in July of 1950, and the National League defeated the American League that time 4-3 to three, on a 14th inning home run by Red Shandies. That's the same year that Ted Williams was injured, crashing into the outfield wall, and was out for almost the remainder of the season. The fractured elbow may have cost the Red Sox the pennant. I want to bring in now the fellow who's up here in the booth with me, ready to broadcast this ball game at Wrigley Field, a former American League All-Star third baseman, and now the man who calls the games for the Tigers over in Detroit. George, it's great seeing you again. Thanks, Jack. It's nice to be with you, and it's nice to be back at an All-Star game again. It must be a thrill for you to come back here, especially to Wrigley Field, because I believe that uh, this was the site of your first All-Star game in the American League. That's absolutely right, Jack. In 1947, I was selected for the first time to the All-Star squad, and... Uh, uh, needless to say, a great moment for me playing on an all-star team here at Wrigley Field. And if I remember correctly, I was the leadoff batter that day facing a guy by the name of Ewell Blackwell, who was plenty tough. Well, it's a great day for baseball. The weatherman has smiled on Chicago. Yesterday, the forecast was not too good. But we have a sunny day in Chicago. The temperature is 77 degrees. The relative humidity is 56%. The wind is out of the southwest at 8 miles an hour. And we have a standing room only crowd. At 10 o'clock this morning, they opened up the bleachers for 5,000 general admission seats, and those seats were gobbled up very quickly. And the grandstand and the reserve box seats have been gone for several weeks. They are still introducing the members of the American League All-Stars who are located in the first base dugout. And now Ralph Houck, the skipper of the American League Stars, has his entire squad lined up between home plate and first base along the foul line. And in just a moment, we'll have the introduction of the National League Stars. The second game of the 1962 All-Star Series is being brought to you from Wrigley Field, Chicago. All-Star.
Star Value Days are here from Chrysler Corporation. Best time, summertime, best time to buy, best time to drive a bad start. A bad start, 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 b
starting lineup for the National League All-Stars. Leading off, playing shortstop, Dick Grote of the Pittsburgh Pirates. In right field, batting second, Roberto Clemente of the Pirates. In center field and batting third, Willie Mays of the San Francisco Giants. At first base, batting cleanup, Orlando Cepeda of the San Francisco Giants. In left field and batting fifth, Tommy Davis of the Los Angeles Dodgers. At third base, batting sixth, Ken Boyer of the St. Louis Cardinals. Catchy and batting seventh, Del Crandall of the Milwaukee Braves. At second base and batting eighth, Bill Mazeroski of the Pirates. And the pitcher for the National League today, Southpaw Johnny Padres of the league-leading Dodgers, who so far has won seven and lost seven. We pause ten seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, 810 on your radio dial. The smoothest sound around. The umpires for the All-Star game today will be Jack O'Connell of the National League behind the plate. Bill McKinley of the American League at first base. Kenny Burkhardt of the National League at second. John Rice of the American League at third. The foul line umpire in left field will be Al Foreman of the National League. Down the right field line from the American League, working his first All-Star game, Bill Kinnaman. It's a beautiful day in Chicago. The sun is out and it's 77 degrees, and we're set for the 33rd All-Star game. And to bring you the first four and a half innings now, back to George Kell. Thanks, Jack. As you said, it's a beautiful day here in Chicago. Rain had been forecasted for this area. We were worried this morning that we might have showers throughout the ball game. And if we did, we're going to have a little tight schedule getting it in tomorrow because some of the ball clubs are scheduled tomorrow night. But right now, it's a bright, sunshiny afternoon, a lot of blue sky up above. Well, the National League taking the field right now. And this crowd, I would imagine, mostly National League fans being played here in a National League ballpark giving them a rousing ovation as they take the field. We're going to have the throwing out of the first ball right now by Mrs. Helen Ward, who is the widow of Mr. Arch Ward, the founder of this ball game. The ball is being tossed right now to Del Crandall, catcher for the National League, and pictures are being taken of the event. And they're going to do it again. The photographer wants to have a retake, and Crandall goes over and presents the ball to Mrs. Ward. A capacity crowd on hand here today. The bleachers were filled about two hours before game time. About 10 o'clock this morning, we had long lines outside the bleachers as 5,000 seats went on sale for this ball game. That was the only seat that had not been sold in advance. And at the opening of the ballpark at 10 o'clock, those seats were quickly filled. It's a shirt sleeve crowd here in Chicago today, a rather warm afternoon. And in center field, where they usually have a blind up out there to give the hitters a little better background to hit, today they'll be hitting right out of the white shirts. Going to make it a little bit difficult here in Wrigley Field. We're just about ready to go. Johnny Padres, fine left-hander of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Completes his warm-up tosses, and Rich Rollins, the third baseman for the Minnesota Twins, steps in to lead off. Rich is a right-handed batter. He has a 316 batting average, 13 home runs, and 70 runs batted in. This young fella has been a spark plug in the Minnesota drive this year. Rather stocky built right-handed batter. Chokes the bat as he faces Padres. The first pitch is inside. One ball and no strikes. Johnny will throw a lot of curves and a lot of change-ups. Gets ready, and here's the 1-0 pitch. Pass ball down low. A ball two and a no-strike count to Rollins. He'll be followed by Billy Moran and then Roger Maris. As Jack told you, Mickey Mantle is out of the lineup today. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Inside again, another fastball off the corner. It's 3-0 to Rollins. Youngster keeps checking with Bill Rigney down at third base. See if the green light is on. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle of the fastball, Rollins was taking all the way. A ball three and a strike one count. Padres, working quickly, delivers another fastball in there. Three and two to Rollins. Hank Bauer coaching at first base. Bill Rigney on at third. Padres ready, and here's the three-two pitch. He swings and hits a ground ball to left field, a base hit for Rich Rollins. Ball hit hard between third and short, and Rollins on at first base with a single. We'll bring up Billy Moran. Another right-handed batter. 
Billy has a 293 batting average. 13 home runs and 55 runs batted in. Billy from the Los Angeles Angels. Padres gets set. The pitch is a curve down low. One ball and no strikes. The National League has Tommy Davis in left field, Willie Mays in center, and Roberto Clemente in right field. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. A ball and a strike to Billy Moran. Billy checking his bat right now. He hit that one down on the handle. The National League with a chance to pull even in this series. They need a win here this afternoon, and the American League, of course, trying to hold them off. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it off. It's going down the right field line, back into the crowd. One ball and two strikes. Warren Spahn was supposed to have started for the National League today, but he came up with a stiff elbow. Here's the pitch. Curve ball hit into left center field. Willie Mays coming over, and he makes the catch. Billy Moran looped one into shallow left center field. Willie Mays racing over. That's one away, and the batter will be Roger Maris. Josh has a 2.46 batting average. 24 home runs and 63 runs batted in. Stocky left-handed batter. Padres makes a quick throw to first. Rollins back in time. Here's the pitch. Curveball is hit into right field. This ball is hit deep. Clemente going back near the wall. He's got it up against the wall. Here's the throw to second. Rollins goes back to first. Roger Maris gave it a ride into deep right field. Roberto Clemente went right back to the wall. Made the catch. Made a quick throw to second. Rollins had tagged up, and he was heading down that way. That's two outs, and the batter will be Colavito. Rocky. Has a 288 batting average. 22 home runs, 66 runs batted in. Fastball is in there. One strike to Calavito. Rocky playing in right field today. He plays left field for the Tigers. A-line playing in right field. But today, he's the right fielder on this all-star squad. Padres delivers another fastball. I believe it hit his bat. Sails off to the right. Rocky trying to get out of the way. Ball hit his bat and rolls off to the right. A two-strike count to the Rock. The American League has a runner at first base. Two outs, there's no score here in the first inning. A pitch to Calavito. He swings and fouls it back. This one's going to be in the crowd. Still two strikes to the Rock. Rich Rollins. Started the ball game with a single to left in case you joined us late. Moran fly to center and Maris fly deep to right field. Here's the pitch to Calavito. Line drive down the left field line. It may be foul. It is. It's hooking back into the crowd. Calavito drove it deep into left field, but he pulled it back into the crowd. Still a strike two count. here in the first inning. Rich Rollins at first base with two outs. Padres gets ready. Here's the pitch. Curve, it's in the dirt. Crando makes a nice stop. Ball hit out in front of the plate. Bound it up. Hit Crandall on the chest protector. Rolled out in front. One ball and two strikes to Calavito. He chokes the bat as he waits on Padres. Here's the pitch. Fastball hit hard to third base. A line drive right straight to Kenny Boyer. And Calavito is out. The score at the end of the first half, the first inning. The American League nothing with the National League coming to bat. What's so good about the good old summertime? All-Star Value Days. Fun time, summertime, best time to buy, best time to drive a Dodge Dart, a Dodge Dart. The 
best time to buy a Dodge Dart is right now, during all-star value days. Right now, you can trade high and buy low at your Dodge dealers. And here's why summertime is a great time to drive a Dodge. It's one of the quickest cars on the road. It gets you to the lake or ball game in nothing flat. Six-cylinder or V8, the Dart moves with more power than almost any car in its class. You get a lot more action on a lot less gas. That makes it fun to drive. And it's plenty roomy for those long weekends or vacation trips. So see your Dodge dealer during All-Star Value Days. Pick a size, pick a price, pick Dodge Dart. Well, we move along into the bottom of the first inning. The American League failed to score. Rich Rollins led off with a single, but the next three batters went out. Malavito lined the ball hard to the third baseman Boyer for the final out. It'll be Dick Grote to lead off for the National League, followed by Roberto Clemente and then Willie Mays. Dick Grote of the Pittsburgh Pirates, right-handed batter. Has a 3.03 batting average. Dave Stenhouse delivers. He hit him with the first pitch. Grote is hit on the side. It's going to be all right. He's trotting down to first base. Well, the National League puts a runner at first base, but no one out. And the batter will be Roberto Clemente, the right fielder. Roberto of the Pirates, he has a 330 batting average. Nine home runs and 58 runs batted in. Now Clemente had three hits and three trips to the plate in the first All-Star game in Washington. Another right-handed batter. Stenhouse delivers. Here's a high fly ball into right field. Palavito waiting on it, pounds his glove, makes the catch, and there's one away. Clemente goes out on the first pitch to Calavito and right. There's no score here in the first inning. The National League with a runner at first base, one out, and the batter is Willie Mays of the San Francisco Giants. Willie has a 304 batting average. 32 home runs and 92 runs batted in for Willie. at first base. Takes his lead. Here's the pitch. May swings and hits a liner into left. It's going to drop in for a hit. Wagner plays it on the first hop. Willie Mays hit that one down on the trademark. He looped it into left field. That's the first hit for the National League. And Willie standing at first base right now shaking his hand as if it might have jarred it a little bit. So the National League threatening here in the first inning. They have runners at first and second. One out. And the batter will be Orlando Cepeda of the San Francisco Giants. Cepeda has a 313 batting average. 21 home runs, 78 runs batted in. Orlando steps out. Stenhouse taking a little bit too much time to suit him. Everybody back on the infield. Here's the pitch. Curve up high. This one high and inside and pushed him back. One ball and no strikes to Cepeda. A scoreless ball game in the first inning. A hits batsman and a single. The National League threatening with one out. Stenhouse gets set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. He got the curveball by him. A ball and a strike to Cepeda. Orlando, a big, strong, right-handed batter. Ball players claim this fellow is one of the strongest men in baseball today. He's right down on the end of the bat. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it back. This one hit the catcher, Earl Batty. Flush on the mask, bounces away. One ball and two strikes. Johnny Padres against Dave Stenhouse in the second All-Star game being played here at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Here's the one-two pitch. High foul ball down the first baseline. Gentile going out. It may be out of play. It is. It's going to be back in the crowd. Gentile going down the line and over to the barrier. No chance to get it. Bertie Tebbets coaching at first base for the National League. And Harry Kraft coaching at third base. Tebbets, the manager of the Milwaukee Braves. And Harry Kraft, the manager of the Houston Colts. Stenhouse trying to get out of a jam here in the first inning. Two on with one out, no score. 
One ball and two strikes to Orlando Cepedo. Dave gets ready. Here's the pitch. Way up high, gets by the catcher, goes back to the screen. The runners will move up. Patty leaped as high as he could. The ball hit the top of his mitt. Bounded back to the screen. It'll be a wild pitch. Charged against Stenhouse. Well, the National League threatening now in a scoreless ball game. They have runners at second and third with only one out in the first inning. The count is even to Cepeda at two and two. Everybody back with the exception of Gentile, who's in close for a play at the plate. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Line drive down the left field line. It is a foul ball just outside the line. Cepeda making a bid for an extra base hit into the corner in left field. Pulled it foul. Still two and two. Tommy Davis is in the on deck circle. National League with a powerful array of right handed batters to face in house. Dave ready. The 2 2 pitch. Ball, it's up high. Three and two to Cepeda. Nick Grote started this inning. Hit by a pitch ball. Clemente flied to right. Willie Mays dropped a single in the left field. The runners moved up on a wild pitch. Now it's three and two to Orlando Cepeda. Stenhouse looking in. Taking too much time to suit Cepeda, and he steps out. Now Earl Patty calls time as he goes out to the mound for a conversation. Could be that Patty's reminding him he's got first base open, and he can make a tough pitch on this fellow. He misses with it. He's got a place to put him. Dave gets ready. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Ground ball foul down the third baseline. Just outside the line. Still three and two to Cepeda. The National League trying to break through in a scoreless ball game. Chaco Conlon, the plate umpire, takes a little time as he goes around to dust off home plate. Conlon at first base, McKin- uh, Conlon behind the plate, McKinley at first base, Burkhardt at second, Johnny Rice at third around the infield. Here's the pitch, a high pop fly behind the plate. Here's Batty coming back. This one's going to be in the crowd. Ball landing about five rows back. Al Foreman is the umpire down the left field line, and Bill Kenneman of the American League down the right field line. Cepeda and Stenhouse in a battle here. A full count. Runners at second and third, one out. Here's the pitch. Down low, he walked him on a close pitch. Orlando Cepeda draws a base on ball. So the bases are loaded with one out. And the batter will be Tommy Davis of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Tommy has a 353 batting average. 16 home rounds, 106 runs batted in. Another strong right-handed batter. No score in the first inning. Here's the first pitch. He swings and pops it up. Here's the catcher, Earl Batty, calling for it. He makes the catch. Stenhouse coming in with a fastball on his fist, and Davis popped it up. So the bases are still loaded with two outs now, and the batter will be Kitty Boyer of the Cardinals. Kenny has a 293 batting average. 18 home runs and 74 runs batted in. Another strong right-handed batter. Dave Stenhouse trying to pitch out of a jam in the first inning. The National League with the bases loaded. Boy, you're waiting. Here's the first pitch. He swings and lands it to the shortstop. Aparicio spears his low line drive going to his left. Boyer hit it like a bullet. So Stenhouse pitches out of a jam in the first inning. And the score at the end of one inning of play, the National League nothing, the American League nothing. Powerful, quick, 
a real performer. America's first sports compact, the Dodge Lancer GT. Open the door of this sporty, spirited Lancer. Settle back in one of the twin contour bucket seats. You'll feel luxury in every detail. Lancer's your kind of car, and plenty easy to own during your Dodge dealer's all-star value days. Fun time, summer time, the best time to buy, the best time to drive a Dodge Lancer, a Dodge Lancer. Your kind of compact, with Chrysler Corporation's advanced engineering features, unibody construction, and seven-soak rust-proofing to make Lancer your kind of compact in all kinds of weather. And now, during your dealer's all-star value days, you get the best deal on all Dodge cars. The biggest trade. Pick a size. Pick a price. Pick Dodge Lancer. Another of the great action cars from Chrysler Corporation. Well, we move along into the second inning. It'll be Jim Gentile, the big first baseman from Baltimore, to lead off for the American League, followed by Earl Batty, then Leon Wagner. Johnny Padre delivers a curve down low. One ball and no strikes. Gentile has a 279 batting average. 26 home runs, 64 runs batted in. Another curve, he swings and misses. One ball and one strike. Gentile really wound up on that one. He was going for downtown Chicago. A scoreless ball game here in the second inning. Padres against Stenhouse. Another curve, it's in the dirt, scooped out by Del Crandall. A ball two and a strike one count. Padre's ready. Here it is, pass ball, he swings and misses. Gentile trying to check his swing, but he'd gone too far. That'll even the count at two and two. That's one of the few real good pass balls Padres has delivered in this game. ready. The 2-2 pitch. Whoop! It's a ball. Crandall fired it down to third, but Conlon said it was outside, so it's 3-2 to Gentile. Shaco hollering whoop to Del Crandall as he fired it to third base. Ball count to Gentile. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it off. This will be out of play. Coming back into the lower deck. Still 3-2. Gentile, the leadoff man for the American League in the second inning. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Gentile strikes out on a curveball. Strikeout number one in this game for Padres. One away, and the batter will be Earl Fatty of the Minnesota Twins. Earl with a 284 batting average. He has seven home runs and 36 runs batted in. Fatty, a strong right-handed batter. The pitch is in there. Strike around the letters. The National League nothing, the American League nothing. We're in the second inning. Here's the pitch. Inside. Pass ball off the corner. A ball and a strike to Batty. Padre is a very fast worker. Looks in once, gets the sign, and he's ready to go. Here's the pitch. Change of pace. It's up high. A ball, two, and a strike one count. The National League threatened in the first inning. They loaded the bases with one out, but Stenhouse got him out. Tommy Davis popped to the catcher. Boy, you're lying to the shortstop. The pitch to Batty hits it on the ground to the shortstop. Grote has it. The throw to first. He's out. Earl Batty goes out. Grote to Cepeda. That's two down. And the batter will be Leon Wagner, the left fielder. Wagner of the Los Angeles Angels has a 277 batting average. 28 home runs, 74 runs batted in. Here's the pitch. Strike a fastball in around the knees. Johnny Padres firing the fastball this inning. Ready again. Here's the pitch. Slow curve. It's down low. Just below the knees this time. A ball and a strike. He caught Wagner way out in front. Here's a 1-1 pitch. Curve, it's in the dirt. Scooped up by Crandall. Leon Wagner, a left-handed batter. Batting with two outs and no one on in the second inning. No score in this game. Andre 
He's ready. Here's the pitch. Curve ball. It's in there. Right around the knee. That'll even the count at two and two to Wagner. Leon didn't like to call on that one too much. He turned, didn't say anything, just looked right back. Here's the two-two pitch. Down low. Nice ball in the dirt. Scooped out again by Crandall. A full count to Wagner. Louis Aparicio in the on-deck circle. Two outs with no one on in the second inning. Padre is ready. The pitch. Ground ball. Hit slowly over the head of the pitcher. Here's Grove coming in. The throw to first. He's safe. Wagner beat it out for an infield single. Grove came racing in from deep charge stop. Scooped it up in front of the bag. Flipped it to first, but not in time. That's hit number two for the American League. It's a runner at first base with two outs, and the batter will be Louis Aparicio of the White Sox. He's getting a big round of applause as he steps in before this home crowd. Louis Ballpark located on the south side of Chicago. No score here in the second inning. The pitch to Louis is in there. Curveball around the knees. A one strike count. Aparicio, a rather small right handed batter. delivers fastball. He fouls it back on the screen. A strike two count to Louis. Leon Wagner at first base with two outs. An infield single for Leon. Second American League hit. The pitch to Louis. Strike three called. He got the fastball over and Aparicio is called out on strikes. The score at the end of the first half of the second inning, the American League, nothing, the National League, nothing. If you're looking for value, look twice at Valiant during All-Star Value Days. Fun time, summertime, best time to buy, best time to drive a new Valiant, a new Valiant. Right now, you'll save plenty on Valiant, America's most rugged compact, during All-Star Value Days from Chrysler Corporation. Valiant is priced less than most other compacts, and low price is just the beginning. You'll keep on saving when you drive a Valiant. Its sizzling slant six engine gives you a lot more action on a lot less gas. Valiant won its class in the recent mobile gas economy run, and you save again with Valiant's battery-saving alternator. The alternator keeps the kick in your battery when others are conking up. It's another first on all Chrysler Corporation cars. Further proof that nobody beats Valiant for value. See your dealer now. Nobody will beat the trade you'll get on Valiant during All-Star Value Days. While we go into the bottom of the second inning, there's no score in this game. No runs on two hits for the American League. No runs on one hit for the National League. Dale Crandall, the catcher of the Milwaukee Braves, will be the leadoff man. He'll be followed by Bill Mazeroski. And the pitcher, Johnny Padres. Randall, a right-handed batter with a 289 batting average. He has five home runs and 31 runs batted in. Randall wearing uniform number one. No scores. We go into the bottom of the second. Stenhouse ready, and here's the first pitch. Strike. He got a fastball over. Chaco Conlon working behind the plate today. No indecision with Jocko. Boy, he goes up with that right hand. Here's the pitch. Curve ball. It's in there. Strike two to Crandall. Dell step back. The curve caught the inside corner. So Stenhouse out in front with a strike two count. Ready? The pitch. Ground ball foul. I believe it hit Crandall. Rolled slowly down the third baseline. We're getting some action in the National League bullpen. It'll be Art Mahaffey of the Phillies warming up. Probably be pitcher number two for Freddie Hutchison today. Stenhouse delivers a fly ball, hits the center field. Maris going back, back, he's there, makes the catch. Dale Crandall out on a fly ball to Roger Maris in center field. That's one away. It'll bring up the second baseman, Phil Mazeroski of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Maz has a 257 batting average. 10 home runs and 52 runs batted in. Another 
right-handed batter as Freddie Hutchison has eight right-handed batters in against Stenhouse. Here's a curve down low. One ball and no strikes. No score in the bottom of the second. One out with no one on. Stenhouse still looking in to Earl Batty. That's the sign. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. One ball, one strike. Dave loaded the bases in the first inning, but he pitched out of a jam as he got Tommy Davis on a foul, foul fly to the catcher. And Ken Boyer then crashed a low liner to the shortstop after he show. Here's the 1-1 pitch. He swings. It's a bouncer to third. A good play by Rollins. Here's a throw to first. He's out. Boy, there's the play of the day. Mazeroski drilled one just inside the bag at third, and Rich Rollins with a fine backhand pickup fired over to Gentile in time to get his man. We've seen some hard hit balls and some fine plays in the field. Two down, and the batter will be Johnny Padres of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Johnny's a left handed batter. He'll be the first one to face Ben House. League playing straight away, not too deep. The pitch is down low. One ball and no strikes. Pasquale was supposed to start for the American League. He had a stiff elbow, and Stenhouse at the last moment was nominated. Here's a foul ball. It's bouncing back to the screen. A ball and a strike. Johnny Padres batting in the second inning with two outs and no one on. No score in this game. Ready. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch. He swings and hits a fly ball down the right field line. It is curving and it's going to be foul. This one back in the crowd. Well, in most ballparks, Kyle Vito would have been able to make the catch on that one, but the right field stands here at Wrigley Field extends right over to the foul line after you get deep down the line. It's only a foot or so, I believe, Jack, between the line and, and the stand. This one drifting back into the crowd. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Another foul ball. This one coming back on the screen. One ball and two strikes. Now, stands close to home plate have a lot to do with players' batting averages. A lot of pop flies, and some parks are caught that drift into the stands in other parks. Here's the pitch. Foul ball. This one back in the upper deck behind the National League dugout. The National League dugout located along the third baseline here at Wrigley Field and the American Leaguers down the first baseline. A scoreless ball game in the second inning. Johnny Padres, the batter, one ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Line drive into right center field. This one's going to drop in. Alavito let the ball get by him. Here's Padres heading for second. The throw coming in is not in time. The ball hit. Took a crazy bounce and bounced by Colavito. He didn't touch it. Roger Maris backing up the play. Came up with the ball. Made a long throw into second base. Not in time to get Padres. It'll be a two-base hit for the pitcher. So the National League threatening again. They have a runner at second base with two outs. And the batter will be Dick Groth, the Pittsburgh shortstop. was hit by a pitch ball in the first inning. Officially, he has not been to the plate. Here's the pitch. Strike. He got a curveball over. Grote has a 3-0-3 batting average. In the first All-Star game, he had one hit and three trips. Stenhouse delivers. Foul ball. This will be out of play down the right field line. It's going into the upper deck. So Dave out in front with a strike two count. Boy, a capacity crowd on hand today. Not a seat to be seen in this ballpark. Across the street, you can see people on the roofs of the building. Here's the pitch. Here's a line drive into right center field. This is going to get a run in. Johnny Padres around third coming in to score in the National League. Goes out in front one to nothing. Lined one in the right center field. Roger Maris raced over, cut it off. He had to make the throw into second base. 
A single and a run batted in for Groats, and the National League out in front, one to nothing. The batter will be Roberto Clemente of the Pirates. Roberto was out on a fly ball to Colavito in the first inning. Ray Herbert beginning to throw in the bullpen for the American League. Time call for a moment as Grote has his shoelaces. Ten outs ready. Here's the pitch. Ball. It's up high. One ball and no strike. The announcement just coming from the press box that Dick Grote drove in the first game, first run of the first All-Star game. Oh, he duplicates that feat here in the second one. Here's the pitch. Clemente swings and fouls it back. A ball and a strike to Roberto. Stenhouse got the first two batters here in the second inning. Dell Crandall out on a fly ball to center. Masaroski out on a grounder to third. Rich Rollins making a fine play. But Padres then doubled into right center and Grote single to center, driving in the run. Here's the pitch. Swings and misses on a high curveball. One and two to Clemente. Roberto, three for three in the first game. Goes over and gets the rosin bag from Willie Mays in the on-deck circle. Stenhouse checks his runner. Here's the pitch. He struck him out. Threw the fastball by him, and Clemente goes down swinging. The score at the end of two full innings of play. The National League won. The American League, nothing. Hey, friend, can I borrow your field glasses? Sure. Here you are. What's going on? I want to check the price of that Plymouth Savoy on a billboard in center field. No. It can't be. Well, what is it? 2206. Let me see those glasses. You must be looking at the scoreboard. That's the right price, my friend. 2206. And right now, you can get a low price, high trade deal on all Plymouths during All Star Value Day. And the low price includes the famous built in value from Chrysler Corporation, Unibody Construction, the battery saving alternator, 32,000 miles between major lube jobs. You'll get the buy of the year on a Plymouth Savoy during All Star Value Day. Only 2206, based on manufacturer's suggested retail price, exclusive of destination charge. You were right, buddy. That Plymouth's only 2206. Well, we move along into the third inning. The National League has taken a one to nothing lead over the American League on a double by the pitcher, Johnny Padres, and a single by the Pittsburgh shortstop, Dick Drogue. Well, Padres had reached the mound, ready to start his warm up tosses here in the third inning, and he's being taken out of the ball game. We're going to get a new pitcher. It's going to be Art Mahaffey of the Philadelphia Phillies. Mahaffey has been throwing in the bullpen. Jack, have you got a little information on Art? Well, George, so far in 26 games with the Phillies this year, Mahaffey is a big right-handed flamethrower, and he's won 14 and lost only 9. And he has an earned run average of 3.32. He's one of the quickest pitchers in the National League. He's about 6 feet 2. And he's defeated every club in the National League with the exception of the St. Louis Cardinals this year, and he hasn't pitched against them. So when he gets a shot at the Cardinals, they may turn the trick on them also. But he's won 14 and lost 9. He's thrown two shutouts among his 14 victories. And already this year, George, in 25 starts, he's gone the route 14 times. So he is Gene Mock's pride and joy over there at Philadelphia. Dave Stenhouse is scheduled to be the leadoff man for the American League in the third inning, but... Pete Ronalds of the Boston Red Sox is going to bat for Stenhouse, so that means that Ray Herbert of the White Sox will be coming on to pitch for the American League in the bottom of the third inning. It's a one to nothing ball game. The National League out in front. National League threatened in the first inning with the bases loaded. One out. Stenhouse got out of that one. He retired the first two batters in the second inning, but a double by Padres and a single by Dick Grote driving in the lone run of this game. Mike Mahaffey, a big, tall right-hander, taking his warm-up tosses. Pete Reynolds has a 332 batting average. Pete is leading the American League in batting. Eight home runs and 45 runs batted in. Pete's a left-handed batter. Spray hitter, he'll hit to all fields. 
here's the announcement coming over the PA system. And Pete Reynolds of the Red Sox will bat for Dave Stenhouse. So it'll be Reynolds, Rollins, and Moran, the first three batters for the American League in the third inning. National League shading Pete a little bit to left field. The first pitch is a strike, a fastball around the letters, and Mahaffey really turned that one loose. A one-strike count. Here's the one-strike pitch. Down low, it's in the dirt. One and one to Reynolds. The American League has two hits. A single by Rollins and a single by Wagner. Happy taking a little time. Gets ready. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Foul ball. It's coming back on the screen. It's one ball and two strikes to Reynolds. Johnny Padre started. It's the first two innings by Happy here in the third. The pitch, another high foul. This one back in the upper deck. 1 and 2 to Reynolds. Ball game in 1961, Art Mahaffey struck out 17 Chicago Cubs, which is only one short of the major league record. That was a side-arming right-hander, and he throws hard. Pete Reynolds standing in, waiting. Here's the 1-2 pitch. He swings and hits a high fly ball deep into left center field. This ball is well hit. It is gone. A home run for Pete Reynolds. A towering fly ball into deep left center field into the bleachers. And this ball game is all tied up. A run of feet. So pistol Pete Reynolds of the Boston Red Sox in a pitch hitting roll has slammed one into the bleachers in left center and this game tied one and one. I'll bring up the third baseman, Rich Rollins. Rich had a single to left field to start the ball game. Mahaffey delivers. Strike a fastball in there. Rollins with a 316 average this year. Stocky built, right handed batter. The one strike pitch. Curve, it's in the dirt. Gets by Crandall, goes back to the screen. A ball and a strike. by Pete Reynolds was his first all-star hit in five ball games. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Curve ball inside. A ball two and a strike one count. That's the first curve delivered by Mahaffey. He's been coming in with a sidearm fastball. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Pop fly down the third baseline. Boy, you're going over near the stands. This one's going to be out of play back into the crowd. Two and two. Well, the players were talking before the game today about the difficult background in center field. They said there's not going to be many balls hit hard here today, but Jack has spent a lot of balls hit hard during the first two and a half innings. A lot of white shirts out in center field. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Another foul ball. This one coming back into the crowd. Still two and two to Rollins. <laughs> Boyer blistered one in the first inning to Aparicio with the bases loaded. Calavito almost tore Boyer loose at third base with a line drive. Mazeroski sent a screamer down the third base line. The Rollins made a good playoff. The pitch to Rollins is up high, high and inside. He has to get out of the way. Three and two to Rich. It's a one-one ball game here in the third inning. Rollins the batter with no one out, no one on. Pete Reynolds started this inning with a home run. Here's the pitch. He swings and lines it down the left field line. It's curving foul. Still three and two to Rich Rollins. I believe the announcement said eight. The eighth pinch hit home run recorded here today by Reynolds. Nobody has hit more than one. Here's a high fly ball down the right field line. Flamini coming over near the stands, and he makes the catch about one step from the stands and crashes in. 
Ball was in foul territory. Rich Rollins out on a foul fly to right field. That's one away, and the batter will be the second baseman, Billy Moran. Billy's 0 for 1. He flied to Willie Mays in left center field in the first inning. Moran with a 293 batting average this year. Here's the pitch. Strike. He got a fastball over the outside corner. One strike to Billy. The American League won the National League won in the third inning. The pitch. He swings and misses on a high fastball. Two strikes. Mike Mahaffey, the new pitcher for the National League. Ray Herbert will be the American League pitcher in the bottom of this inning. Here's the pitch. He swings and fouls it back. This one's going to be in the crowd. A two-strike count to Moran. Billy batting with one out and no one on in the third inning. Mahaffey delivers. Ground ball to the shortstop. Groat bobbles the ball. Can't make a play on it. Billy Moran is going to be safe at first base. A routine ground ball to the shortstop. It got away from Dick Groat. It'll be an error. Charged to the shortstop. What's a runner at first base? One out, and the batter will be Roger Maris. Roger was out in the first inning on a long fly ball to right field. Clemente going right back to the fence to make the catch. Happy checks the runner. The pitch. Ball. It's in tight. One ball and no strike. Well, the National League picked up a run in the second. Tigers. The American League coming back here in the third inning, picking up a run on a pinch hit home run by Pete Reynolds. They have a runner at first base, one out. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul. It's back on the screen. One and one to Roger Maris. Reynolds led off the inning with a home run. Rollins and sent a foul fly ball to Clemente. Billy Moran safe at first base on an error by the shortstop. A ball and a strike to Maris. Here's the pitch. He swings and flips a fly ball in the center field. Not too deep. Willie Mays waiting on it. Makes the catch. There's two outs. Roger Maris out on a high fly ball in the center field. We'll bring up Rocky Colavito of the Tigers. Rocky's been a vicious line drive straight to Boyer at third base on his first trip. That was in the first inning. A 1-1 ball game here in the top of the third. Billy Moran is on at first base with two outs. Colavito has 22 home runs this year. 66 runs batted in. Takes a strike over the outside corner. Mahaffey coming in with a sidearm fastball. The National League deep and around to the left for the Rock. Hart gets ready. Quick throw to first base. Delivered that one. Submarine pitch over to Cepeda. gets ready. Here's the pitch. Here's a line drive. Hit deep to left. Tommy Davis back at the wall. It's off his glove. Here's Billy Moran being waved in. He's going to have to hurry. Here's the throw coming to the plate. He is out at the plate. There's Jocko Conlon. A long belt by Colavito into deep left. Tommy Davis went back to the wall. Leaped. He got his glove on it. It bounced away. He fired it into Boyer. Boyer made the throw to Crandall, and Billy Moran was out at the plate on a very close play. The score at the end of the first half of the third inning, the American League won, the National League won. Here's the official ruling on that last play. Tommy Davis has been given a two-base error by the official score, and Billy Moran is out at the plate. Davis to Boyer to Crandall, 7-5-2 to five to two if you're keeping score. So one run on one hit and two errors that inning for the National League. This game all tied at 1-1 as we go into the bottom of the third. Willie Mays will lead off. He'll be followed by Cepeda and then Tommy Davis. 
Willie lined a single to left field on his first trip. That was in the first inning. Alavito hit it like a bullet. Just didn't get it up in the air. Davis got back, got his glove on it, but it popped out. Ray Herbert, the new pitcher, he delivers a fastball. It's hit slowly towards the shortstop. He'll have to hurry. He can't make a play. An infield single for Willie Mays. Willie was really flying down the first baseline. He topped the ball over the head of the pitcher. Aparicio came charging in, scooped it up, but did not make a throw as he realized he had no chance to get Mays. Willie's second hit. Puts a runner at first base with no one out. And the batter will be Orlando Cepeda. Orlando drew a walk on his first trip. Ray Herbert of the Chicago White Sox, now doing the pitching for the American League. Makes a quick throw to first, and Mays is back on a very close play. Tio put the tag on him. Herbert has won 10 and lost 6 this year. He has a 3.61 earned run average. Another right-hander. For the American League. Fastball down low. One ball and no strikes to Orlando Cepeda. A 1-1 ball game in the third inning. Stanley Musial is out in the on-deck circle. Looks like he's got a bat for Tommy Davis. Tommy might have been hurt as he crashed into the wall trying to make the catch on Calavito's drive. Here's the pitch. Strike a fastball in around the knees. One and one to Cepeda. Dan Musial waiting in the on-deck circle. Tommy Davis scheduled to be the next batter. What an ovation will go up in this ballpark when Musial steps in. Herbert makes another throw to first base. This one in the dirt. Scooped up by Gentile. The National League with a runner at first base and no one out in the third inning. We're all tied a run apiece. Here's the pitch. He swings and misses. Another throw to first. Mays goes sliding back. The ball got away from Gentile as he was putting the tag on him. Earl Batty leads both legs and picking runners off. He's picked five runners off third base this year. That's more than most catchers will do in two seasons. Quick throw down to Gentile and Mays had to hurry to get back then. One ball, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Ground ball hit to the shortstop. Louie up with it, over to second, back to first, a double play. Cepeda hits into a fast double play. Aparicio to Billy Moran and back to Jim Gentile. So there's two outs with no one on, and Stanley Musial is coming on. Here's the ovation for Musial. batting average. He's second in the National League to Tommy Davis. Herbert delivers the fastball. It's in there for a call strike. One strike to Stanley. With his fence single in this year's first game, Usual extended his all-star game record of most hits, 20. Total base is 40. At bats, 60. What a record for Mr. Musial. Here's the one-strike pitch. Down low. Herbert coming in with a fastball below the knee. A ball and a strike. Usual batting with two outs, no one on in the third inning. The American League won, the National League won. Here's the 1-1 pitch. He swings and hits a ground ball slowly to short. Aparicio up with it. The throw to first, it's in the dirt, but Gentile scoops it up on a good play. Usual goes out. Shark to first. The score at the end of three full innings of play. The National League won. The American League won. Chrysler's going great and making great news wherever it goes. And one of the newsmakers, the red-blooded Chrysler 300. It's easy to own this direct descendant of the famous sports series. During all-star value days, you'll get the kind of trade that lets you move up to Chrysler quality. See your Chrysler dealer now. You'll enjoy the luxury and power of the 300. And there are no junior additions in the Chrysler line to cut down your high resale value. Test drive the Chrysler 300 during your Chrysler dealer's all-star value days. Let's 
pause here for station identification. This is WGY 810 on your radio dial, Schenectady. No rain out of this exciting all-star game. You don't have to worry about saving for a rainy day either. If you deposit regularly at the Industrial Bank of Schenectady, your money earns an assured interest rate of 4% for money deposited for one year. In other words, if you deposit your money at the Industrial Bank of Schenectady, leave it in your account for just one year, you're assured 4% interest on that money. The Industrial Bank of Schenectady gives you the incentive to save. Open a savings account, pay your savings account like any regular bill. The Industrial Bank of Schenectady can satisfy your every banking need. Offices at 224 State Street, Schenectady, and 1815 State Street. And usual of the Cardinals. Mark Mahaffey is the pitcher. Sepeda's at first base. Mazeroski at second. Dick Groth the shortstop. And Kitty Boyer on at third base. Now well, we're all tied 1-1 as we go into the fourth inning. Jim Gentile will be the leadoff man for the American League, followed by Batty and then Wagner. Gentile struck out on his first trip. That was against Johnny Padres back in the second inning. He's facing Art Mahaffey for the first time. Here's the first pitch. Ball, it's inside a curveball that pushed him back. One ball and no strikes to Gentile. Jim has 26 home runs and 64 runs batted in. Here's the 1-0 and pitch. He swings and hits a ground ball to first base. Cepeda has it. The race to the bag. Orlando wins it. Gentile goes out on a bouncing ball to first. That's one away. And the batter will be the catcher, Earl Batty. ground ball to Dick Grode in the second inning 0 for 1 in this game a 1-1 ball game in the fourth inning National League scored first a double by Padres a single by Dick Grote the pitch to Batty is outside one ball and no strength the American League tied it up in the third inning on a pinch hit home run by Pete Runnels of the Red Sox Batty the batter with one out and no one on a happy delivers Curve outside. Ball two and no strike. A new outfield in for the National League. Usual in left. Aaron in center. Frank Robinson in right field. There's a foul ball. It's coming back into the crowd. A ball two and a strike one count. We've seen a little bit of everything in this ball game. Some fine fielding play, some hard hit balls that have been caught. A home run, pinch hit by Pete Reynolds, and some fine pitching. The 2 1 pitch. Ball, it's too high. 3 and 1 to Earl Batty. Johnny Padres started for the National League. Art Mahaffey now pitching. Dave Stenhouse started for the American League. Ray Herbert now doing the pitching. Here's the 3-1 pitch. Batty takes it over the outside corner. 3-2. and two. Well, Happy, a big, strong right-hander. Side armor. He must be tough on these right-handed batters. He's ready, and here's the pitch. Batty swings and pops it foul down the right field line. This one's curving into the crowd. Still 3-2. One ball game in the fourth inning. One out with no one on for the American League. Here's the pitch. Inside, he walked him. Batty draws a base on ball. Mahaffey got the fastball high and tight. Puts a runner at first base, only one out. And the batter will be Leon Wagner. Wag had an infield single in the second inning. He topped one over the head of the pitcher. Beat the relay to first base from Dick Crooks. Bob Gibson, right-hander from the Cardinals, throwing in the bullpen for the National League. A 1-1 ball game in the fourth inning. Here's the pitch to Wagner. Ball outside. 
One ball and no strike. Johnny Roseboro, the Los Angeles Dodgers, doing the catching. Del Crandall of the Braves started. We're going to get some action in the American League bullpen as Hank Aguirre, a left-hander from the Detroit Tigers, gets up to start loosening up. Here's a quick throw to first. Batty back in time. Mahaffey gets ready. Another throw to first. Nice stop by Cepeda. Mahaffey throws underhand to first base. Leon Wagner, the batter, with a one ball and a no strike count. Now, Cepeda has moved behind the runner at first. Mahaffey was just about ready to make a throw over there, and nobody home. Here's the pitch. Outside. Nice ball off the corner. Mahaffey trying to hit the outside corner against Leon Wagner. A ball two and a no-strike count. Bob Gibson of the Cardinals warming up for the National League. And Hank O'Gary, left-hander for the Tigers, throwing for the American League. Earl Batty at first base with one out in the fourth inning. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Wagner swings and fouls it back. A ball two and a strike one count. Mahaffey coming in with a fastball around the letters. And Wagner really had a riffle at it. Cepeda's about three steps behind Batty at first base. He's taking a little more protection against the left-handed batter. Wag choking the bat a little bit. The pitch. He swings and sends a fly ball deep into right field. Robinson drifting back on the warning track. It's gone. A home run for Leon Wagner. A towering fly ball. Robinson went all the way back to the fence, just drifting back, and it landed on the catwalk in deep right field. The American League goes out in front by a score of 3-1 to one on a two-run homer by Leon Wagner. Home runs have accounted for all the American League runs in this game. A towering fly ball by Leon Wagner that landed on the catwalk in deep right field. A 3-1 to one ball game as Aparicio steps in. My happy delivers. Here's a line drive to the shortstop. Dick Grode, racing to his left, speared the low liner off the bat of Aparicio. That's two outs, and the batter is scheduled to be the pitcher, Ray Herbert. I'm a happy. Coming on in the third inning, gave up a home run to Pete Reynolds, batting for the pitcher that tied the score at 1-1. And now a two-run homer here in the fourth by Leon Wagner has put the American League in front, three to one. Ray Herbert coming on, swinging a couple of bats. This fellow's a pretty good hitter. Ray's a right-handed batter. Mahaffey ready, and here's the pitch. Herbert swings and pops it up behind the plate. It's going to be out of play. This one coming back on the screen. A one-strike count. Here's the pitch. Curveball. He fouls this one back on the screen. Two strikes to Herbert. Gentile started this inning with a ground ball to first base. Batty drew a walk. Wagner hit a home run to make it 3-1 to one in the American League. Aparicio then lined to the shortstop. Here's the pitch to Herbert. Strike three called. He got the curveball over, and Ray Herbert is called out on strikes. The score at the end of the first half of the fourth inning, the American League three and the National League one. Do you get excited when you see a home run? Mm-hmm. You get excited over a new car? Uh-huh. How about getting a new car for twenty nine sixty four? Well. How about a full-size Chrysler for twenty nine sixty four? Now you're talking. It's the Chrysler Newport, still only $29.64. It's one big reason why Chrysler's going great and why thousands of motorists are moving up to Chrysler quality. Other good reasons. The Newport standard engine delivers 265 horsepower, and it uses regular gas. Really? How about you? 
If you've been thinking of moving up to Chrysler, now's the time for action during your Chrysler dealer's all-star value days. Trading's easy. You'll get a big trade and a great buy. Test drive the car that's really going great, the Chrysler Newport. Manufacturer's suggested retail price, exclusive of destination charges, still only twenty nine sixty four. Twenty nine sixty four. That's great. Well, we move along into the bottom of the fourth inning. The American League out in front by a score of three to one. Ken Boyer, the Cardinals, will lead off. He'll be followed by John Roseborough, then Bill Mazeroski. Randall's 0 for 1. He lined to the shortstop in the first inning with the bases loaded. Kenny, a right-handed batter, facing the right-hander Ray Herbert. Ray ready, and here's the first pitch. Pass ball up half. One ball and no strikes. Boyer has been consistently good in all-star competition. He owns a 385 batting mark for the seven games before today that he's participated in. Here's a pitch. He swings and lines it to left field. A solid base hit for Kenny Boyer. Wagner up for the ball. Tosses it back in. So the National League with a runner at first base and no one out. And the batter will be the catcher, Johnny Roseboro. This will be his first time at bat. Dell Crandall, the starting catcher. Roseboro has a 275 batting average. Four home runs and 37 runs batted in this year. Johnny, a left-handed batter facing the right-hander. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's down low. One ball or no strikes. It's three to one, the American League over the National League in the bottom of the fourth inning. And a ball game that's had a little bit of everything. Herbert gets ready. Here's the pitch. He swings, it's a grounder to second. It might be a double play over to Louis. Back to first, the double play. Johnny Roseboro hit one like a bullet to Billy Moran at second. He fired to Aparicio for the force out on Boyer. The relay back to Gentile in plenty of time. Well, there's two outs, and the batter will be George Altman of the Chicago Cubs. He'll be coming on to bat for Mazeroski. Altman is on his way up to the plate, but here's Ricky Ashburn now coming up. Altman's going to bat for Mazeroski. The Ashburn getting into the on-deck circle. If Altman gets on, he'll be batting for the pitcher. Altman replaced Philip Ballou on the National League squad. Has a 3.26 batting average this year. 14 home runs and 45 runs batted in. Big, tall, left-handed batter. He's batting with two outs and no one on in the fourth inning. Herbert delivers. Strike a fastball in around the knees. The American League out in front in this game, three to one. Two double plays in the last two innings of Help Ray Herbert. One started by Aparicio, one by Billy Moran. Here's the pitch. He swings and lifts a high foul fly down the left field line. Wagner and Aparicio coming over, and Wagner's got it, I believe. A great catch by Leon Wagner as he makes a diving catch down the left field line. Wagner with a play of the day. The score at the end of four innings of play, the American League three and the National League one. It will be the top of the batting order for the American League. Rich Rollins to lead off. Here's the announcement coming from the PA system about the changes in the National League lineup. Gibson, the pitcher, banks at first base and bowling at second. Rollins takes one high and inside. One ball and no strike. Rich has had a single in two trips in this game. Single coming in the first inning. Foul to right field in the third inning. Here's a strike. Fastball over the outside corner. One and one to Rollins. Here's a ground ball hit to the shortstop. Grode on a big hop to throw to first. He is out by a step. 
Rich Rollins goes out short to first. One away, and the batter will be Billy Moran. Billy's 0 for 2 in this game. Fly to center, safe on an error in the third inning. It's a 3 to 1 ball game, the American League out in front. There's a swing and a miss on a fastball. Jack just informed me there are some who believe that Bob Gibson is even faster than Sandy Koufax. And that's really throwing the ball. Here's a curve down low. One and one to Billy Moran. He's batting in the fifth inning. One out with no one on. The American League in front. Three to one. Here's the pitch. Down low, he chucks his swing. A ball two and a strike one count. In the National League batting order, Bernie Banks will bat fourth. Here's the two one pitch. There's a fly ball hit deep to right. Robinson going back. He's got it right on the edge of the warning track. Billy Moran lands one. In the deep right field, Robinson goes back and makes the cut. It's two outs. And the batter will be Roger Maris. Rogers flies deep to right. And on his last trip, he went out on a fly ball to Willie Mays at center field. Batting with two outs and no one on in the fifth inning. Gibson delivers a fastball inside. One ball and no strike. Home runs accounting for all three of the American League runs. Solo blast by Runnels and a two-run homer by Leon Wagner. Here's another one down low. This one in the dirt. Scooped up by Johnny Roseboro. National League run coming on a double by Johnny Padres and a single by Dick Grote. No pitch. Strike. He blazed a fastball over. Two and one to Roger Maris. Roger, left handed batter waiting. Here it is. Change up. He got it inside. Three and one. One pitch. Down low, he walked him. Roger Maris draws a base on ball. Rocky Colomino, the batter. Roger Maris at first base with two outs in the fifth inning. Rocky lined to the third baseman in the first inning. In the third inning, he lined the ball deep to left. Tommy Davis got it in his glove. He couldn't hold it. It was a two-base arrow. Takes a fastball way up high. One ball and no strikes. Alavito has hit the ball hard on both occasions. Bob Gibson gets set. The pitch to Calavito. He swings and misses on a fastball. Rocky told me before the game today this was his first time to play in Wrigley Field. He said, I hear they sail out of here, and I hope I can get one up in the air. Well, he hit one hard enough to go out, but he didn't get it up in the air in the third inning. Here's the 1-1 pitch. He swings and misses on a fastball. One and two to the Rock. Three to one, the American League out in front here in the fifth inning. Roger Maris at first base with two outs. The pitch to Colavito. Strike three call. He got the curveball over, and Colavito is called out on strikes. The score at the end of the first half of the fifth inning, the American League three and the National League one. Well, the first half of today's game was brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation. The second half of today's game is brought to you by Gillette Safety Razor Company. We've had some great fielding plays here today, and here's a great fielder himself, Bill Mazeroski. The other day, Lindsey Nelson got to chatting with Bill on a couple of subjects. Bill, I hear you're a big jazz buff. Yes, I collect all the latest records. By the way, I understand you're a fan of the latest Gillette adjustable razor. I thought my first adjustment was the most, but this new Slim even tops that for easy handling. 
Yes, Bill, Gillette's new slim adjustable is streamlined from head to handle. Lighter for easier handling, longer for better balance, slimmer for hard-to-reach shaving areas. You turn the exclusive micrometer dial to any one of nine different settings for the blade exposure and shaving angle that suits your skin and beard best. With your slim adjustable, you get a dispenser of double-edged Gillette Super Blue Blade. There's incredible shaving comfort. You can hardly believe there's a blade in your razor. Pick up the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor on display at a nearby store. It's the first adjustable razor ever at the low, low price of only $1.50 complete. Well, moving into our mic right now, all set to bring you the last half of this ball game. Here's Jack Quinlan of the Chicago Cubs, right here in your home ballpark, Jack. Thank you, George, and how you doing again, baseball fans? We have a couple of substitutions. Brooks Robinson of Baltimore now playing third for the American League, and rookie Tom Trush of the Yankees is at shortstop. Leading off of the National League All-Stars in the bottom of the fifth inning is second baseman Frank Bowling of the Milwaukee Braves, a right-handed batter. American League leads it by a score of 3-1. to one. Here's Ray Herbert's first pitch, and it's a slider that's outside of all. The home run ball off Art Mahaffey has accounted for all of the American League runs. Reynolds with a pinch home run in the third. Leon Wagner with a two-run blast in the fourth inning. The pitch on the way, and Bowling takes a ball that's low outside. Foley knows all of these American League stars because he, for a number of years, was with the Detroit Tigers. American League three, the National League one, the ball game in the bottom of the fifth. That beautiful Wrigley Field in Chicago. Herbert's 2-0 and pitch, strike call, two balls and a strike. Ray Herbert, a right-hander. Last time out, last Thursday, he beat Washington. Stenhouse started, worked two innings, allowed a run, and three hits. The National League has five hits, the American League four. Swing and a drive by Bowling, deep to left center. Maris backpedaling, he's got it on the track. Roger Maris went back and clipped that ball on the track in deep left center field. One gone at the bottom of the fifth, and here's the shortstop and leadoff man for the National League stars, Dick Grote. Right-handed batter, he's been hit by a pitch, and he is single to center field. Grote, one of those rare specimens that never had an inning of minor league baseball. He stepped right off the campus of Duke University into a pirate uniform, was an All-American in baseball and an All-American basketball star for the Blue Devils while in college. He'll be followed by Frank Robinson. One out in the bottom of the fifth, the National League trailing 3-1. to one. Herbert into the windup. Here's the pitch. Curveball strike inside corner at the letters. All in one the count. Beautiful baseball weather in Chicago. If we'd ordered this six months ago, the weatherman couldn't have smiled any more than he has done today. Perfect for baseball for the players and the spectators. Grote takes a fastball down low. The count is even. Ball one and strike one. Earl Batty steps out in front of the plate, fires the ball back out to the mound. Robinson at third. Tress at short. Billy Moran at second. Big Gentile at first. The outfield made up of Leon Wagner, Roger Maris, and Rocky Colavito. One and one to Grote. Swing and a liner. Look out. It's foul in the box seats behind the first base dugout. One ball and two strikes on Grote as he hammered a ball into the box seats down the right field line. Grote is not a power hitter. He's had only one home run all year. But he is a good hitter. He's an exceptional hit and run man, a good right field hitter. And very seldom will he strike out. One ball and two strikes on the captain and shortstop of the Pittsburgh Pirates, Dick Grote. Harry Kraft coaching the third, Bertie Tebbets at first. Here's Ray Herbert's one and two pitch. A ball inside. Jock O'Conlon looked like he was going to raise that right arm, but he called it ball two, and the count is even two balls and two strikes. League three, the National League All Stars won the ball game in the bottom of the fifth. One out and nobody on. This is Herbert's third inning. He came on in the third, and he's allowed two hits, singles by Willie Mays and Kenny Boyer. Swinging a bouncing ball to the third baseman's left, the shortstop Trash has it, looks at the ball, throws too late, he beat it out. Tom Trash, the rookie shortstop of the American League and from the Yankees, couldn't get the ball out of his glove immediately. By the time he fired across the diamond to Genfield, Grote was over the bag. He's safe at first. Now we'll wait for an official ruling, whether that'll be a hit or an error on the shortstop. Grote is on first with one out. 
And Frank Robinson is up, the most valuable player in the National League last year when he led the Cincinnati Reds to the National League flag. Mantle in first base and one out. American League leads by a score of 3-1 to one at Wrigley Field in Chicago. They're going to give Groat a base hit. Here's the pitch to Robinson, a swing and a foul, and he bangs it up on the net. Credit Groat with a hit, his second, and the third hit off Ray Herbert, and the sixth National League hit of the day. So Groat is on first with one out, and the count on Robinson is one strike. Frank, big right-handed batter from the Cincinnati Reds. He's hitting 339 for the year with 19 home runs, 85 runs driven in. He's the tying run at the plate. The outfield deep and swung way around to the left for the full hitting Frank Robinson. Ray Herbert looks in to get a sign from Batty, his catcher. Grote with a lead, and here's the pitch. In the dirt, nice stop by Batty. He blocked that ball and kept it from going behind him. One and one the count on Frank Robinson. Waiting to hit next is Hank Aaron of the Braves. Not an empty seat in the ballpark, folks. It's loaded. Right around 40,000 here today. The first time the All-Star Game has been played at Wrigley Field since 1947. Frank Robinson, right-handed batter, out of the box briefly. Ray Herbert's getting a new baseball from plate umpire Jock O'Connell. Fans begin to talk it up. Road on first base, one out. A ball and a strike on Robinson. He stands very close to the plate. Here's the stretch and the delivery. Swing and a drive. Well hit. Way back. Maris back. He's near the wall. He caught it in the vines. Here's Grove going back to first. Robinson pinned Roger Maris to the wall in left center field, and he was in the vines when he caught that ball between the 368 and the 400 foot marker. A tremendous shot by Robinson and a fine play by Roger Maris. Now they're two out with a man on first. Two well hit balls off Herbert in this inning, but both of them caught by Maris. One of them in the vines. Two gone and a man on first. Here's Hank Aaron. American League leads by a score of three to one. Hank Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves, right-handed batter. Red number 44 on his back. Herbert trying to get out of the inning. Here's the stretch. And the pitch on the way, and it's a strike call just above the knees to Aaron. Oh, and one. Hank Gary. Gary of Detroit again is warming up in the American League bullpen down in right field. The American League leading by a score of three to one on a pair of home runs, one by Reynolds and one by Leon Wagner. The National League scored first. They got their only run in the bottom of the second. Here's the own one pitch. Aaron takes a ball. It's over the plate but low. Below the knees, and the count is even at ball one and strike one now. Wagner very deep in left field. Maris over in left center. And Colavito well off the right field line, over 100 feet off that line. One ball and one strike. Mays opened the game for the National League in center field, and he had two for two. This is Hank Aaron's first time at bat in the ball game. Rode on first base, two out in the bottom of the fifth. The pitch by Herbert. Curveball low outside. Two balls and a strike. Robinson at third, Tresh at short, Billy Moran at second. Moran, who has solidified the Angels infield defensively and turned Bill Rigney's team into the talk of the American League through the halfway point in the season, spends his offseason down at Georgia Tech. He's very deep at second on the edge of the outfield grass right now, a big hole on the right side of the diamond between Moran and Jim Gentile, who's holding the man on at first. Ray Herbert's in the stretch. The 2-1 pitch. Aaron takes strike two on the outside corner of fastball up around the letters. And the count is even out. Two balls and two strikes. Usually here at Wrigley Field, there is an open section of bleachers in center field, which is roped off, as George mentioned earlier, because it will help the hitters. It's a good background. But they opened up that section today, and the bleachers are jammed to capacity. First time that those empty seats have been available for the public since the All-Star game was played here in 1947. 
Aaron levels that bat over the plate. Here's Ray Herbert's 2-2 pitch. A swing and a bouncing ball over the mound. The shortstop, Tresh, has the ball. Fires to first, and he is out to retire the side. So Aaron bounces out. Tresh to Genfield. No runs and one hit, and a man left on base. And at the end of five, it's the American League three and the National League one. Orlando Cepeda, who started the game for the National League at first base today, is one of the most exciting ball players and one of the great hitters in baseball today. He's a fireball on the field, but it's hard to get him to say anything off the field. However, the other day, Lindsey Nelson did get him talking. Orlando, what do you think of those super blue blades? Well, Lindsey, they are terrific. With them, I get really smooth shape. Orlando's like the millions upon millions who have made Gillette Super Blues the most popular razor blades in the world today. They're the result of an engineering process that's exclusive with Gillette. Edges so remarkably keen and smooth, so downright easy shaving, you might think there's no blade in your razor at all. Super Blues are double-edged, two per blade for extra convenience and many extra shaves. Treat yourself to an experience in shaving speed and comfort you'll never forget. A Super Blue Blade Shave. Get them in dispensers at 10 for 69 cents, 15 for a dollar, or you get a supply with the new Gillette Slim adjustable razor at the low, low price of only $1.50 complete. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. WGY Schenectady. You know, you never strike out when you do business with the Industrial Bank of Schenectady. Finance your medical bill, furniture purchases, new or used car, a college education for your children, a loan for taxes, and hundreds of other purposes. The Industrial Bank of Schenectady will help you protect your valuables with a safe deposit box, even smooth your traveling with a vacation and travel expense loan. The main office is at 224 State Street. The drive-in branch at 1815 State Street. Free parking in both locations. We're moving into the sixth inning at Wrigley Field with the American League All-Stars coming to bat. Leading off is Jim Gentile, the big first baseman from Baltimore. He has struck out and grounded out to the first baseman unassisted. On the mound is Bob Gibson, the flame-throwing right-hander, and here's a fastball down low. 1-0. Gibson working his second inning in this game. He entered the game in the fifth. He allowed a walk. Here's the windup and the pitch on the way. Ball two to Gentile down low. Two and nothing the count now. Gibson played basketball at Creighton University in Omaha and also with the Harlem Globetrotters. He's 6'1", he weighs 190. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul at the catcher's feet. Two balls and a strike to count on Gentile. Earl Batty is the on-deck man. Gentile taps the plate with the end of the bat. Two balls and a strike to count. Big left-handed power hitter. Here's the delivery. A start of a swing, but he checked it in time as the ball dropped low. Gibson took a little off that pitch. It's ball three. Gentile last year became the first man in Major League history to hit grand slam home runs in two successive innings. He spent eight years in the Dodger organization, yet got only 36 official times at bat as a National Leaguer before switching to the Orioles, becoming one of the game's great home run hitters. Here's a ball inside. Gentile walks to start the sixth. That's the second walk Gibson's allowed and the third pass given by National League pitchers today. And it brings up the catcher for the American League stars, Earl Batty of Minnesota, right-handed hitter. He's grounded out and he's walked, and his walk preceded the home run by Wagner in the fourth inning. The American League three, the National League one, were in the top of the sixth. Musial in left, Aaron in center, Frank Robinson in right. Gibson is in the stretch. Here's the pitch, strike fastball, letter high. Batty's a big fella, stockily built, right-handed hitter, wears a number 10. Bill Rigney, the manager of the Angels, coaching a third. And, of course, he's well acquainted with many of these National League stars because he was the manager of the Giants for several years. Fastball hit foul into the American League dugout. He didn't get around on a fastball, and he hit it late, and he scattered some of the boys on the bench over there. 3-1, to one, the American League leading. Sixth inning at Wrigley Field. The oldest men on the National League squad are Warren Spahn and Musial. The oldest American League man, Yogi Berra. Two strikes on Batty. Here's the pitch by Gibson, high up around his head. One ball, two strikes. Boyer at third, wrote it short. They played the whole game. Frank Bowling at second, Ernie Banks at first. Banks holding the runner, Jen Teal on. Here's the pitch. Batty takes high again. Two balls and two strikes on Earl Batty. Waiting to hit next is Leon Wagner. Well, Mickey Mantle was withheld from the starting lineup today because of a strained left knee that he suffered in yesterday's doubleheader with the White Sox in New York. 2-2 pitch. Swing and a bouncing ball. Weakly hit toward third. Boyer in. Fields it. Throws to second. Out. Force play on Gentile. Boyer to bowling. A force out at second. 
So Batty safe at first on the fielder's choice. One out and a man on first, and here's Wagner, who drove the two-run homer onto the right field catwalk his last time up. Wagner got an infield hit in the second, and then the home run with a man on in the fourth. Powerfully built left-handed batter from the Los Angeles Angels. We're getting a pinch runner. Al Kaline running for Batty at first. Wagner takes a ball high and outside. Kaline of Detroit, who's been out a good part of the year with a broken collarbone, is a pinch runner for Batty at first base. American League three, the National League one, the ball game in the sixth inning at Wrigley Field. Bob Gibson is in the stretch. Pitch to Wagner. Leon takes a ball wide at the knees, 2-0. But it's to Mantle's everlasting credit that even though injuries sidelined him a substantial part of the season until now, he nevertheless was voted a first-team All-Star berth by his rival contemporaries. Swinging a very high fly ball behind short. Dick Rowe drifting back on the grass in shallow left field. He's under the ball, and he makes the catch. K-line goes back to first. So they get Wagner out for the first time on a pop fly to Grote, who made the catch on the outfield grass. Two gone, and here is the rookie shortstop from the New York Yankees, Tom Tresh. Tresh, a switch hitter, batting left-handed against Gibson. Three to one, American League leading, top of the sixth. K-line, a pinch runner at first with two away. The pitch to Tresh, strike, fastball, letter high. Well, Mickey Mantle and Roger Maris may not be aware of it, but the Yankees as a team never have lost a game in Wrigley Field. They played and won four World Series games here, the last two in 1938 when Mantle was only seven years old and Maris was four. Here's the pitch. Tresh takes a ball. It's outside. One ball and one strike. Dick Farrell, a fireballing right-hander of the Houston Colts, is now at work in the National League bullpen in left field. Three to one, the American League stars are leading. It's the sixth inning. Here's the pitch. Tresh takes a ball high, pops out of Roseboro's glove, but he tears the mask off and gets the ball back quickly. And the runner remains at first. The National League won the first game this year, earlier this month in Washington, by a score of 3-1. to one. Gibson looking in, getting a sign. Here's the stretch and the pitch. Tresh swings, lines one, left field, curving, dropping, dropping, fair ball in the corner. Musial chasing it down. K-line rounding third. They're waving him in. Throw to the plate. Too late. He scores standing up. Throw back to second. They've got Tresh. Here's the tight by bowling. He's out, but the run scores. That'll be a double by Tresh down the left field line. Driving K-line in from first base. Hit number one and run number one off Gibson. And then the throw to the plate by the relay man, Groth, was too late. Banks cut it off. Banks fired the ball to bowling. And they nailed the batter rounding second. The play going from the left fielder, Musial, to Grote, to Ernie Banks, to Frank Bowling, who made the put out on Tresh. In the inning, one run, one hit, and nobody left on. And at the end of five and a half innings of play, it's now the American League four, the National League one. New pitcher is Hank Gagari, a left-hander, who's 1-8 and lost four for Detroit, with an earned run average of 2.37. And the new catcher is Elston Howard of the New York Yankees. Ernie Banks leads off for the National League in the last half of the sixth inning. This is Banks' first time up in the ballgame. Right-handed hitter. One of the great sluggers in the National League today. A Gary's first pitch. Curve. Strike at the letters. All one. Banks is hitting 265 for the Cubs this year. 26 home runs and 69 runs batted in. Here's a swing and a dribbler down the right side. Gentile, the first baseman, fields it. Steps on the bag. Banks is out. Gentile unassisted. Ray Herbert worked three innings. Allowed no runs, and he gave up three hits. And now here is Musial, who pinch hit for Tommy Davis in the third and was thrown out by the shortstop. Eddie Matthews of the Milwaukee Braves starting to loosen up in the National League bullpen. American League leading 4-1. to one. We're in the bottom of the sixth. Musial swings and he misses a curveball from McGarry. One strike. Now the wind up by McGarry. Big left-hander throws. Curveball swung on. A high fly to center. Roger Maris getting back. He's under the ball. He has room and he makes the catch to God. 
Musial flies to center. Here's Kenny Boyer. He's lined hard to the shortstop and single to left field. Will Musial will reach the age of 42 in November. And he continues to outbox Father Time. And the fact remains that he entered professional baseball the year that Rich Rollins was born. Rollins started this game at third base for the American League. And the American League is leading 4-1. to one. Boyer, big right-handed slugger from the St. Louis Cardinals. Here's Hank Gary's first pitch. Swing and a drive into right field. Right fielder Calavito moving over to his left, pounding the glove, and he makes the play to retire the side. Three up and three down. The first time that's happened against the National League today. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on. And at the end of six, it's the American League four, the National League one. Dick Farrell is the new pitcher for the National League. Billy Williams is the new left fielder replacing Stan Musial. And Eddie Matthews is playing third base in place of Kenny Boyer. Farrell has won seven and lost 13 with the Houston Colts. He has an earned run average of 2.85. As a matter of fact, yesterday afternoon in the second game of a doubleheader right here at Wrigley Field, he was the winning pitcher for Houston as they defeated the Cubs by a score of 3-1. to one. Farrell has been used both as a relief man and as a starter by Houston manager Harry Kraft. Hank Aguirre, the pitcher, leads off in the seventh inning for the American League. They are leading the National League Stars by a score of 4-1. to one. He's the switch hitter. He's batting left-handed against Dick Farrell. Here's the pitch. Fastball down the middle of bullseye. Strike call. So it's Matthews at third. Grote at short. Bowling at second. Banks at first. Billy Williams of the Cubs in left. Hank Aaron of Milwaukee in center. Swing and a miss by a Gary. And Frank Robinson of the Reds in right. Bob Gibson worked two innings. Allowed one run, one hit. Struck out a batter, and he walked two. And this is Dick Farrell. The 0-2 pitch to a Gary struck him out. A knee-high fastball. Three pitches did it. And that's the fifth strikeout against the American League All-Stars, the first recorded by Dick Farrell. 4-1, to the American League leading. Here's Brooks Robinson, the right-handed batter. Third baseman. Up for the first time. Robinson of Baltimore is hitting 280, And there's a low fastball thrown in by Farrell. Robinson has hit 17 home runs for the Orioles, and he has 57 RBIs. 4-1, to one, the American League leads. National League led from the second inning until the top of the third when the American League tied it, and the American League stars won in front with two runs in the fourth, added one more in the sixth. The swing and a foul that's back on the screen. One and one on Robinson. He'll be followed by Billy Moran. Power, the manager of the Kansas City A's, the old Yankee Warhorse, is coaching at first base for Ralph Houck. Here's a ball that's outside. Farrell has three main pitches, a blazing fastball, a good slider, and the slip pitch, which he has been taught by his general manager, Paul Richards, down at Houston. Two balls and a strike. Here's the windup, the 2-1 delivery. Low inside, run off his shoe tops. It's 3-1 on Robinson. Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants starting to warm up in the National League bullpen. The American League is leading 4-1. to one. We're in the seventh. Robinson with a count of three balls and a strike. Here's the windup in the pitch. Ball four, he walked him. He threw it outside. So Robinson walks. That's the first walk issued by Farrell, but the fourth walk given to the American League stars today. And it brings up the second baseman of the Los Angeles Angels, Billy Moran. He's fly to center, he's been safe on an air, and he's fly deep to right field. Of course, at every All-Star game, Carl Hubble's sensational strikeout performance in the 1934 game is recalled. What a job old Hubble did. Pitch to Moran, a swing and a foul off the mask of Johnny Roseboro. Hubble struck out the American League's five top hitters in order, getting Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and Jimmy Fox in the first inning, and Al Simmons and Joe Cronin, the first two men in the second inning. Ruth took a call third strike. The other four went down swinging at Hubble's tantalizing fastball and screwball. One strike to count on Billy Moran with a runner at first and one out. We're in the seventh. Here's the pitch. Swing and a high foul. It's out of play, way up behind the plate. A new baseball is given to Johnny Roseboro by umpire Jock O'Conlon, and it's thrown out to the mound. Four to one. The American League is in front. We're in the seventh. Farrell 
goes into the stretch, keeps an eye on Robinson. Here's the pitch. Inside, low, ball one, strike two. Yes, sir, there's not an empty seat in Wrigley Field today. And there are fans on several roofs of apartment houses behind the left field wall, behind the right field wall. Here's the pitch. Swinging a liner into center field. Hank Aaron comes on fast. Did he catch it? No, he trapped the ball. Here's, he threw the ball to first base. Now he's going to claim that he caught it. And the second base umpire out there, Kenny Burkhart, says no, that he trapped that ball. And then Aaron fired the ball back to first because he was going to try for a double up on Brooks Robinson, who was halfway between first and second. When the umpire ruled it a trap and not a fair catch, then Robinson raced into second base, and that's going to be a hit for Billy Moran. So it's hit number one off Farrell, and the sixth American League hit of the ball game. Now they have runners at first and second with one out, and Roger Maris is up. He's fly deep to right, fly to center, and walk. Four to one, American League leading. They're threatening again here in the top of the seventh inning. Dick Farrell of Houston is on the mound for the National League All-Stars. He's in the stretch. Robinson at second, Moran at first, and Maris swings and fouls one behind the plate, strike one. Billy Williams in left, Hank Aaron in center, and Frank Robinson is very deep in right. Roger Maris still hasn't given up on hitting 62 home runs in 1962. He hit 61 in 61. Twice straight running, the most valuable player in the American League. Strong left-handed hitter waiting. Here's the pitch. Swing and a high pop foul. It's out of play, though, up on the net behind home plate. Two strikes. Farrell broke in with the Phillies, then was traded to Los Angeles Dodgers. And in the National League expansion draft last October, following the World Series, he was picked up by Houston. Six feet two, 210-pounder Dick Farrell had polio as a child and overcame it, which should be an inspiring fact for youngsters. He was told he would never take part in athletics. Now he finds himself in an all-star game. Here's a ball that's low inside. One ball, two strikes to count on Roger Maris. Robinson at second, Moran at first, one gone in the seventh. The American League leading 4-1 to over the National League. Matthews at third, wrote it short, bowling at second. And the first baseman, Banks, is playing deep behind the runner. Roseboro flashes a sign to Dick Farrell. The one and two pitch. There's that slip pitch, and he hits a foul off to the right over near the American League dugout. One ball, two strikes on Maris. A new set of baseballs is given to the plate umpire, Jock O'Conlon, by the youngster in charge of them down here. a bit of a jam here after walking Robinson. A base hit by Billy Moran puts American League runners at first and second. Maris swings and he belts a foul up on the net. And the count remains one ball and two strikes. On July the 10th the D.C. Stadium, the National League defeated the American League 3-1 to one in a very well-played game and this has been a game that's been crowded with a lot of color. Bouncer over the mound. Might be through. Bowling a great play out at second. Throw to first save. Frank Bowling made a whale of a play. Backhanding the ball behind second. Flipping the ball backhanded to Groth the shortstop for a force out on Moran. The relay to Banks was not in time to double up Maris. He is safe on a fielder's choice. Robinson moving to third on the out. And now the American League has runners on first and third with two out and the batter is Rocky Calavito. He's lined to third, been safe on an air by the left fielder, and been called out on strikes. It's 4-1 to one in favor of the American League. We're in the top of the seventh at Wrigley Field in Chicago, the 33rd All-Star Game. Robinson at third, Roger Maris at first and two out. Calavito swings and he misses. He went all the way around. What a cut he had. strike on the rock. Powerful right-handed batter. 22 home runs this year. 66 runs driven in. And here's the pitch. Fastball swung on. Well hit. Way back. Deep to left. It might be gone. It is a three-run homer. Walk in 
left field. Driving Robinson in from third. Driving Maris in from first base. And now the American League is leading by a score of 7-1. to one. Here is Gentile, the first baseman. He has struck out, grounded out, and walked. Calavito's third all-star game home run. A line drive shot onto the catwalk above the bleacher wall in left field. Gentile takes a ball that's outside. Three runs are in here in the seventh inning for the American League. They've opened up a six-run gap. And they're leading seven to one. Farrell winding. One and nothing to Gentile. A swing and a blooper. Short center field. Going to drop in for a base hit. It does. In front of Hank Aaron. Gentile is on with his first hit. Hit number three off Farrell. He's going to bring up Elston Howard, the catcher. From the New York Yankees. A walk, a single, and a home run. Have produced three more runs here. All but one of the runs for the American League, the result of home runs. The only run that was not a home run was in the sixth inning when they scored on a double. Here's the stretch pitch to Elston Howard, a swing and a miss and a slider. Howard is hitting 269 for the Yankees, 10 home runs and 50 runs driven in. Big right-handed batter. Man on first is Gentile, two gone on the top of the seventh. And here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. Another breaking ball. Two strikes to count on Elston Howard. Matthews at third. Grote at short. Bowling at second. Banks at first. American League power has really come through for the All-Stars today. And they lead 7-1 to one over the National League. Here's the pitch. A ball just off the corner to a right-handed batter a bit wide. Ball one and strike two. Beautiful sun-kissed day in Chicago. I'm Jack Quinlan along with George Kell bringing you the story of the ball game from Wrigley Field. Here's the pitch. Swing, he checked it in time. He started to go for a low outside breaking ball. Two balls, two strikes on Elston Howard. The American League out in front, 7-1. to one. We're in the seventh. Dick Farrell has the sign. He's in the stretch. And the 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him on a low fastball. He struck him out to retire the side. But in the seventh inning, the American League scored three times on three hits. One man was left on base. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning with the National League coming to bat. The score, American League 7, the National League 1. Fans, we're going into the bottom of the seventh inning, and Johnny Roseboro, the National League catcher, will lead off. National League trailing 7-1. Roseboro hit into a double play the first time up. The pitch by Hank Gary. Fastball, strike at the letters. It's 0-1. In the on-deck area is Richie Ashburn of the New York Mets. Here's the pitch. Curveball, strike two, call. Uh, Gary threw a slow, tantalizing curveball. The paid attendance today is 38,359. Here's the pitch. A ball that's outside. The paid attendance, 38359 and the receipts, $216,908.71. Here's the pitch. Curve, a swing and a miss, and Roseboro strikes out, opening up the seventh inning for the National League. That is a Gary's first strikeout, and only the second strikeout against the National League All-Stars. Now, batting for the pitcher is Richie Ashburn of the New York Mets. Richie Ashburn, a left-handed batter, is hitting for Dick Farrell with one out in the bottom of the seventh and the American League leading 7-1. to one. A Gary into the windup. Here's the pitch. Ashburn takes a strike up around the letters. It's 0-1. Ashburn this year hitting 321 for the Mets. And he's hit six home runs with 24 runs batted in. Swing and a liner out of the reach of the shortstop in the left field of base hit. Ashburn cracked his bat as he lined one in the hole between Robinson and Tresh. And it's hit number seven by the National League, the first off Hank Gary. So Ashburn pinch singles to left field, and it brings up the second baseman, Frank Foley. First time up and his only time up, he drove Maris deep in left center field to haul one down. The American League leading 7-1 to one in the bottom of the seventh at Wrigley Field. National League scored their run in the second. They've been shut out since. Frank Bowling, right-handed batter waiting. Here's a Gary's pitch. Strike fastball on the inside corner at the belt. 
Bowling jumped back, thinking the ball was going to be in close. But it ripped off the inside corner. On one. A Gary ready. Here's the pitch. Very high outside. And the count is even a ball and a strike. Wagner in left. Maris in center. Calavito in right. Ralph Hout, the skipper of the American League Stars, indicated before the game that Mantle possibly could be used as a pitch batter, but likely not. Line drive, it's foul by bowling into the left field bullpen. One ball and two strikes. The American League has outhit the National League 8-7, to seven, and they've outscored the National League Stars 7-1. to one. Ashburn at first, one out. Here's the one and two pitch to Bowling. Swing and a drive in the right center field. Pretty well hit. Maris chasing it. Is on the run. He might not get it. He doesn't. The ball lands at the base of the wall. Here's Ashburn going to be held up to third. It's a double for Bowling. Harry Kraft held Ashburn up to third as Bowling doubles to the track in right center field between Maris and Calavito. And it's a double by Bowling, putting National League runners at second and third and one out. Hit number eight by the National League. The second off Hank Gary. The batter now is Dick Roth, the leadoff man, who's been on base three straight times. Two singles and hit by a pitch. 7-1, American League leading. Bottom of the seventh. Throw the right-handed batter up. He'll be followed by Frank Robinson. Ashford on third. Bowling on second. Gary into the windup. The tall left-hander throws. A curveball strike on one. on growth. On the windup, the Detroit lefty rocks back. Here it is. Fastball swung on a ground ball to second. The runner's coming in to score. Moran flips it to Gentile for the out. And on the out, the runner on third, Ashburn, dances in with a run, and Bowling moves to third. It's 7-2 to two now in favor of the American League. A run batted in for Grote as he's thrown out second to first. Now Bowling is on third with two gone, and the batter is Frank Robinson who drove Maris into the vines in the fifth inning to haul down a 400-foot drive at the fence. 7-2, American League leading. Runner at third and two out. The windup, the pitch to Robinson. Fastball inside low, a ball. Hank Gagari on the mound for the American League. Windy. And here's the pitch. Swing and a hot smash to the third baseman, Brooks Robinson. He has it. The peg to Gentile, and Frank Robinson is thrown out to retire the side. One run, two hits, and a man left on. And at the end of seven, score. The American League seven, the National League two. On the mound for the National League is right-hander Juan Marichal of the San Francisco Giants. Dick Farrell. Worked one inning. He allowed three runs and three hits. He struck out two batters, and he walked one. And now Marischal of the Giants comes on to work here in the top of the eighth inning against the American League with Leon Wagner of the Angels leading off. He has singled, he has hit a two-run homer, and he has popped up to the shortstop. Marischal, a big right-hander, has won 13 and lost 7 for Alvin Dark's Giants. First pitch, an overhand fastball that he swings and misses. Laurie Wills has replaced Grote at shortstop. Wills of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Marischal, 13 wins and 7 defeats. And 3 shutouts included in the victories. Here's the pitch to Wagner. High for a ball. Marischal is strictly an up and over right-hander. Fires the ball from right out of the bleacher crowd up over his head. And he's a good pitcher. Earned run average, 3.32. Wind up, the 1-1 pitch. Slider, cut on and line to hit the center field for Leon Wagner. That gives him three for four. Hit number one off Marischal. And hit number nine by the American League All-Stars. Leon Wagner opens the eighth with a bullet into center field. Seven to two, the American League leads. Eighth inning. Here is Tom Tresh. He doubled into the left field corner, driving a run in his last time up, but then he himself was nailed, rounding second base, trying to get the third. A swing and a curveball, and he fouls it back to the screen. Strike one. Well, I mentioned before the ball game that uh, Wrigley Field has a capacity of under what the crowd is today. This is a standing room only crowd of 38,359. 
A man on first with nobody out, and the top of the eighth, here's the pitch. Fastball, he hits his bat, he hits a short line drive, picked up on the ground by Wills, a force out at second to bowling. He didn't mean to swing on a fastball that jammed him, and the ball was a soft liner past the pitcher and dropped on the grass behind the mound. Maury Wills, the shortstop, picked it up and flipped the ball to bowling for a force out on Wagner, and Tresh is safe at first base on a fielder's choice. So there's a man on first with one out. And the batter now is going to be Hank Gary, the pitcher. He'll bat right-handed now. He's a switch hitter, but he's going to go right-handed against Marischal anyway. Man on first and one out. We're in the eighth. Here's the pitch. Fastball. Steve right, right down the middle. Now Gary's been up once. He struck out. That was against Dick Farrell. Seven to two, the American League leading. We're in the eighth. Eddie Matthews at third, Maury Wills at short, Frank Bowling at second, Ernie Banks at first. The outfield made up of Billy Williams in left, Hank Aaron in center, Frank Robinson in right. Now Matthews comes in shallow, looking for a possible bunt as a Gary squares around, but a throw to first is too late. One strike on a Gary. Stretched by Marischal. Here's the pitch. He's gonna bunt. He takes a well, evidently he did go after that. It looked like he pulled the bat out of the way, but. Umpire Jocko Conlon called it a strike. It's 0-2 now. Pitch was high and outside, but Gary evidently offered at it. Runner on first base is Tresh. The 0-2 pitch by Marischal. That's a ball that's outside. Ball one and strike two. One ball, two strikes on Gary. He looks down at Bill Rigney, the third base coach. The American League is leading 7-2. They're batting in the top of the eighth. Marischal's 1-2 and two pitch now. Here it is on the way. And he tries to bunt. He misses it. Here's a throw to first. And the second baseman bowling cutting behind the runner too late. McGarry strikes out. First strike out by Marischal. And Tresh diving back to the bag got back. Frank Bowling had cut in behind him. Coming around from his second base position. And the throw by the catcher Roseboro was just a little bit too late. Now here's Brooks Robinson. Up once and he walked. Here's the pitch. Curveball swung on. A high fly ball to left field. Billy Williams racing back. He's deep. He's under the ball waiting and he makes the play to retire the side. So in the eighth inning for the American League, no runs and one hit and a man left on base. And after seven and a half innings of play, the score is still the American League seven and the National League two. Hank Aaron of the Milwaukee Braves will lead off in the bottom of the eighth. Thomas of the Angels replaces Wagner in left field. We're going into the bottom of the eighth. Here's Hank Aaron, right-handed batter, taking a strike curveball up around the shoulders. Milt Pappas of Baltimore and Jim Cott of Minnesota are warming up in the American League bullpen. Here's a weak tap to second. Billy Moran flips it to Gentile for the out. Aaron hit a weak ground ball to Billy Moran, and there's one gone. Here's Banks. Ernie Banks has been up once, and he grounded out to the first baseman. One out and nobody on in the bottom of the eighth. The American League leading by a score of 7-2. to two. National League has eight hits, three off Stenhouse, three off Herbert, two so far off of Gary. Banks, right-handed batter, deep in the box. Wind up. And the pitch by a Gary. Fastball swung on. A high fly to center. Roger Maris going back. He's at the wall. It might be gone. It's off the top of the wall. Bank rounding second. He'll try for a triple. Here's Calavito's throw. He's in the dirt safe. A three base hit. Ernie Banks triples off the center field wall. Up over Maris's head. And it's hit number three off of Gary. As Banks hits a long triple off the top of the wall in center field. That'll bring up Billy Williams, the Cub left fielder and the National League left fielder, batting for the first time today. Man on third and one out on the bottom of the eighth. The National League trailing 7-2. Billy Williams hitting 309. 18 home runs this year for the Cubs with 66 runs driven in. The windup on the pitch by a Gary. Curveball and it's wide of all. 1-0. Last year, Williams was named the... Rookie of the Year in the National League. Comes from Plateau, Alabama. 22-year-old left-handed batter. Fastball, and he swings and he fouls it on the net. The count is even, a ball and a strike. 
seven to two, the American League leading. The ball game in the bottom of the eighth. The American League leads in the series, 16 games to 15, and one game resulted in a tie. That was the second game last year at Boston called because of rain. This is the 33rd All-Star Classic. Here it is. Swing and a curveball, and he grounds to the shortstop crush. Here's Banks coming in to score as Williams has thrown out short to first. But the run is in, and it's now 7-3 to three in favor of the American League. Billy Williams gets an RBI. Banks scoring from third on the infield out. Two gone, and here's the third baseman, Eddie Matthews, of the Milwaukee Braves. Matthews, a strong left-handed batter. Hitting 273, got off to a slow start because of an injured shoulder. But he's hit 21 home runs for the Braves, and he has 70 RBIs. A run is in in the bottom of the eighth. Base is empty. Matthews waves at a curveball by a Gary. Strike one. The American League now leads by four. Seven to three in the bottom of the eighth. Two out, and the base is empty. A Gary rocks back. Here's the pitch. He tried to bunt a curveball, and he missed it for strike two. The National League did not have a left-handed batter in its starting lineup, except for the pitcher, Johnny Padres. Now they have several. Billy Williams, Eddie Matthews, Johnny Roseboro. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Curve, a swing of foul tip that Elston Howard hung on to. He struck him out to retire the side. One run, one hit, a triple by Banks. Nobody left on, and at the end of eight, it's the American League 7, the National League 3. Marischal fires a fastball strike on the outside corner. It's 0 1. Barra hitting 222 for the Yankees this year. Eight homers and 24 runs driven in. American League leading 7 3. We're in the ninth. The windup by Marischal. Here's the pitch. Check this swing. The ball is outside. 1 and 1. Billy Williams in left. Hank Aaron in center, Frank Robinson in right. Matthews, Wills, Bowling, and Banks in the National League infield. Marischal, the fifth pitcher used by National League skipper Fred Hutchinson. Here's a curveball hit on the ground to Matthews at third base. He bobbles it, picks it up, throws low to Banks. Ball gets away from Banks, goes into the American League dugout, and Barra is awarded second base. A bad throw by Eddie Matthews, bounded in front of the first baseman, Banks. There are two errors charged to Matthews. One on bobbling the ball to begin with, and the other error on throwing the ball into the American League dugout. Two errors for Eddie Matthews on the same play. And that is the fourth National League error. Bobby Richardson is going into run for Barra at second base. Bobby Richardson, and he'll probably stay in the game then at second base, in the bottom of the ninth. So Richardson's at second with nobody out, and the batter is Roger Maris, the center fielder. And he takes a low curveball for Marischal for a ball. It's 1-0. Maris is 0-3 for 3 today. Fly to right, fly to center, hit into a forced play, and walked. 7-3, the American League is leading. We're in the ninth inning. Juan Marischal of the San Francisco Giants is on the mound. He's in the stretch. The look back at Richardson, here's the pitch. Maris swings at a curveball, and he missed it, going all the way around. One ball and one strike on Roger Maris. Johnny Padre started the game for the National League. He worked two innings. Mahaffey worked two. Gibson worked two. Farrell worked an inning. The 1-1 pitch to Maris. Fastball, and he golfs it foul into the upper deck to the left of the plate. The count is one ball and two strikes on Roger Maris. Made baseball history last year. 61 home runs. Richardson, a pinch runner at second. He's running for the Yogi Man. There is nobody out. Time is called now. A ball got away from somebody in the American League bullpen in right field and rolled all the way to the plate. Marischal gets a sign from Roseboro. Big right-handers in the stretch to look back. And now the one and two pitch to Roger Maris on the way. And it's a curveball in the dirt that gets by the catcher, goes back to the screen, and Richardson takes third. Marischal threw a breaking ball in the dirt in front of the plate, and it bounded over Roseboro's left shoulder going to the screen. A wild pitch is charged to Marischal. 
It's 7-3 to three in favor of the American League, and they're threatening to get more here in the top of the ninth. Now the National League infield on the right side is going to play in halfway. Here's Maury Wills, the shortstop, coming in halfway. Third baseman also. Two and two to Maris. Curve line to hit right field. The run is in. Maris is going to round first. He'll try for two. Here's Robinson's throw. Maris is in standing a double. It's eight to three. The American League leads. Roger Maris doubles down the right field line, sending Bobby Richardson in with run number one and hit number two off Juan Marischal. It's eight to three now in favor of the American League. A double by Roger Maris and a run driven in. Calavito up. Slapped a three-run homer his last time up. One for four today for Rocky Calavito. In the starting lineup, only because Mickey Mantle is injured. The stretch by Marischal. Here's the pitch. Sidearm fastball goes by the catcher to the screen, and there's Maris going to third. That may be another wild pitch. It was way outside. First time that Marischal has come sidearm today. And he threw the ball by everybody to the screen. Another wild pitch, his second one of the inning. So Maris is parked on third, and again the National League infield will play in shallow. One and nothing on Rocky Calavito. Big, strong, right-handed batter, used to be with Cleveland. Here's the lineup and the pitch. Overhand fastball swung on, a fly ball to center. Here's Hank Aaron coming on to make the catch. Maris tags up a third. Here he comes. Here's the throw. Two ladies in standing up. It's 9-3 to three in favor of the American League. Calavito drives in his fourth run of the day with a sacrifice fly to center field. Scoring Maris from third after the catch. Run number two off Marischal. And it's 9-3 to three in favor of the American League now. And the batter is Jim Gentile of Baltimore. He's had one out of three plus a walk. Marischal, wind up. Here's the pitch. Change up. He swings and he misses. Looking for the fastball. All in one. Gentile has struck out, grounded out, walked and singled. Bases are empty. There's one out, but two runs are in for the American League. They're leading the National League Stars 9-3. to three. Here's a fastball, and he hits it foul off to the left, over toward the upper deck. Two strikes on Gentile. Elston Howard will bat next. Roseboro flashes a sign out to the right-hander. Here's the windup, the 0-2 pitch to Gentile. Overhand fastball, it's over the plate but low. A ball and two strikes. Marischal comes from the Dominican Republic. He's a six-footer, weighs 185. Last year with the Giants, he won 13 games. Here's the pitch. Inside at the letters, a ball, two and two. And this year, Marischal has won 13, and the season's far from over. He's a member of Alvin Dark's second-place Giants, who now are four games behind the league-leading Dodgers in the National League chase. The 2-2 pitch by Marischal. Gentile takes a slow curve. It's low, ball three. In the American League, the Yankees lead the second-place Angels by five games, with the Twins five and a half out. There'll be several games in the American League tomorrow night. Here's the windup. And a 3-2 pitch by Marischal. A swing and a drive by Gentile way back in left field. Williams is there. He caught it on the track. A screaming Mimi caught by Billy Williams on the left field track in front of the bleachers out there. Man, have there been some balls hit in this ball game today. Drives that have been caught, some that haven't been caught. The American League is leading 9-3. Here's Elston Howard. He's been up once and struck out. Right-handed hitter. Gentile really got a hold of one and drove a liner to left field that Billy Williams caught on the warning track. Marischal goes into the windup. Two gone now. Here's the pitch. Here's a swing and a foul back into the crowd behind the plate. One strike on Elston Howard. National League will have one more shot in the bottom of the ninth. They'll send up the bottom of the order. Roseboro, a pinch hitter for the pitcher, and then Frank Bowling, slated to hit in that order. Here's a check swing. The ball hit his bat and went foul to the screen. Two strikes. A double error on Eddie Matthews opening up this inning. Led to the trouble. And then a double by Maris and a sacrifice fly by Calavito. Put two more runs across the plate for the American League. The own two pitch to Elston Howard. A changeup that's high up around his head. A ball and two strikes. American League has ten hits. The National League nine. American League is leading 9-3, two out on the top of the ninth. Marischal winding. 
kicks that left leg way up. Here's the pitch. Fastball struck him out again. Elston Howard goes down, swinging to retire the side. Two runs in the inning. One hit, two errors, and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the ninth. The National League coming to bat, trailing the American League. The score is 9-3. to three. Physical fitness is important to a baseball player. In fact, he couldn't do without it. But what about the rest of us? Not so important, you say? Well, you couldn't be more wrong. Recent studies show that almost one half of our school children are physically under par. If our children are to become responsible and productive adults, you parents must help. See that your children's schools have a program of daily vigorous physical activity. Bring it up at your next PTA meeting. For more information, write to the President's Council on Youth Fitness, Washington 25, D.C. We pause 30 seconds for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. You know, it's difficult even for the experts to make a home run, in baseball, that is, but it's simple for you to make your home run smoothly with the help of the Industrial Bank of Schenectady's many services. Protect your valuables with a safe deposit box at Industrial Bank of Schenectady. Save regularly where your savings earn a big 4% interest if left at the bank for only one year. The Industrial Bank of Schenectady will help you with a personal loan, business loan, or home improvement loan. Main office at 224 State Street, drive-in branch at 1815 State Street. Johnny Roseboro, who has struck out and hit into a double play, opens up the ninth inning for the National League Stars, and he takes a strike on the outside part of the plate at 0-1. National League needs six runs to get back into it. They're trailing 9-3. to three. The wind-up, and here's the pitch. Curveball swung on, well tagged, deep, but curving. Down the right field line, might be fair, might be foul. Home run for Roseboro. There's one that was fair by a foot and no more, as it went just inside the flagpole in right field, and it's 9-4 to four in favor of the American League. A home run by Johnny Roseboro, opening up the bottom of the ninth. That's Johnny Roseboro's first all-star hit. Here's Johnny Callison now, the Philadelphia Phillies. Pinch hitting for Marischal. Callison, left-handed batter. And he's hitting 302 with the Phillies. 11 homers, 51 RBIs. Fastball is wide at the knees. Ball one. Nine to four, the American League leads. Roseboro opening up the bottom of the ninth with a long poke over the right field fence. Here's a swing, a foul into the upper deck to the left of the plate. One and one on Johnny Callison. Bob Perkey, the big winner from Cincinnati, starting to throw in the National League bullpen. Lee Thomas in left field for the American League. Roger Maris in center. Rocky Calavito in right. Gentile has played the whole game. So have Calavito and Maris. Here's the pitch. Ball, it's wide. It's two and one on Johnny Callison. The right field foul line umpire had to go down the line to make sure that ball stayed fair that Roseboro hit, and it stayed just fair. The 2-1 pitch. Ball three outside. Three and one on Callison. He's hitting for Marischal. Nine to four, the American League leads. We're in the bottom of the ninth. Wrigley Field in Chicago, the scene of the 33rd All-Star game. Milt Pappas, big right-hander winding. 3-1 pitch. He walked him, ball four. Callison gets a free ride to first base. That's only the second walk the National League has received today. And the first since the first inning, when Cepeda drew a pass. Now Frank Bowling is up. Bowling has fly deep to center field, and he's doubled. Right-handed batter. Here's the stretch, the pitch by Pappas, and Bowling takes a strike at the knees. Breaking ball on the outside corner. Oh, and one. American League nine, the National League All-Stars four. A man on first and nobody out in the last of the night. Here's a swing, a bouncing ball to the shortstop. Tresh throws to Richardson out. Relay to first, safe, no double play. Callison is forced, though, from Tresh to Bobby Richardson at second. Now Callison, or Bowling, is on first base as Callison is forced out at second. And it's going to bring to the plate the shortstop, Maury Wills. Switch hitting shortstop of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Wills up for the first time. He's hitting 285. Six home runs, 36 RBIs. One of the slickest fielders in baseball. 
and one of the fastest men in baseball, Maury Wills. He'll bat left-handed here against Pappas, a right-hander from Baltimore. Uh, Gary worked three innings, allowed one run and three hits. Pappas is the fourth pitcher used by American League manager Ralph Houck. Bowling at first and one out, the pitch to Maury Wills. He takes a strike over the outside corner. It's 0-1. Pappas in the stretch. Here's the ball. It's low. One and one the count now. A ball and a strike on Wills. Frank Robinson in the on-deck area waiting. The pitch by Pappas. Wills chops one over the third baseman's head. The shortstop has it. Tresh to Richardson. Force play on bowling. He's out at second. Wills is safe on a fielder's choice now as Tresh went over to his right. Grabbed the ball on the second bounce and flipped it to Bobby Richardson, forcing bowling. And now Wills is on first with two gone, and the batter is Frank Robinson, the National League right fielder. Robinson has fly deep to center and been thrown out by the third baseman. Nine to four, the American League leads. Two out in the ninth. Robinson swings, lifts the fly ball down the left field line. Left fielder moving over. He's there. The game is over. The American League wins it as Robinson flies out to Lee Thomas near the line in left field, but in fair territory. And in the bottom of the ninth inning for the National League, one run, one hit, the leadoff home run by Roseboro, and one man left on base. And the final score was the American League 9, the National League 4, and in a moment we'll review the highlights of the game for you. Dick Rote was one of the stars of the first game in Washington, and he did a great job here for the National League today. Dick's a real team leader. He was one of the first to try the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor. Here's what he had to say about it to Lindsay Nelson. Is this your first experience with an adjustable, Dick? No, Lindsay, I've been an adjustable user from the start, but the new Slim is even better. It's easier to handle. I think you get at those hard-to-reach areas. And only the Gillette Adjustable has the precision micrometer dial with nine different settings. Twist it to the one that gives you just the right blade exposure and shaving angle for your skin and beard. The Slim Adjustable is streamlined from head to handle, lighter for easier handling, longer for better balance, and it costs only $1.50, lowest price ever for an adjustable razor. That includes the supply of double-edged Gillette Super Blue Blades for all but incredible shaving comfort. Quick shave, clean, refreshing shave. See the new Gillette Slim Adjustable Razor at the low, low price of only $1.50 on display now at a nearby store. Well, let's take a look at the totals now in this ball game. The American League won it by a score of 9-4, to four, and the American League scored nine runs on ten hits, no errors. They left six men on base. The National League All-Stars had four runs, ten hits. They made four errors. They left seven men on. The winning pitcher, Ray Herbert, of the Chicago White Sox, the losing pitcher, Art Mahaffey, of the Philadelphia Phillies, and the time of the ball game was two hours and 28 minutes. And now, as some 38,359 people begin filing out of Wrigley Field here on the north side of Chicago, the home of the Cubs, the results in the All-Star Series looks like this. The American League now leads 17 wins. The National League has 15 wins, and one game ended in a tie. So the 33rd All-Star game is over, George, and it was a great one, especially for the American League. They really put on a hitting show here today. Quite a ball game, Jack. We saw a little bit of everything here today, but it was the long ball hitting of the American League that paid off here today for their 9-4 win. The National League started the scoring in the second inning on a double by Padres and a single by Grote, but that was the only time all day they were out in front. The American League then went to work on a pinch hit home run by Pete Reynolds. Pete was uh, batting in the third inning that tied the score at 1-1, and from then on, it was all the American League, Jack. They gave uh, a terrific display of their power. Leon Wagner, of course, was one of the big sticks for the American League. He came up today with three hits, including a tremendous home run over the right field catwalk. And uh, Runnels, of course, I didn't think Runnels, George, was supposed to be that kind of a hitter. I thought he was more or less a slap hitter. I think he might have fooled my happy uh, when he drove that ball up into the seats in left center field. It was a well-kissed ball, though. He is a slap hitter, but he's playing up in Fenway Park in Boston. They've got this short left field fence some 310 feet away, and Pete has geared his swing to that wall, and he hits a lot of balls off the wall and up in the screen. And here today, Art Mahaffey evidently laid a fastball on the outside part of the plate, and he drilled it about 375 feet away. George, it was good working with you. Good luck to you and your Detroit Tigers for the rest of the year. Thanks, Jack. We're needing a lot of luck right now. I know what you mean. After the home run by Reynolds, the American League went right to work. A walk to Batty in the third inning. In the fourth inning, and a home run by Wagner put the American League out in front by a score of 3-1. to one. 
In the sixth inning, Earl Batty was safe on a fielder's choice. Al Kaline ran for him, and he scored on a double by Tommy Trash, making the score 4-1 to one at that point. Then in the seventh inning, the American League broke it wide open. Brooks Robinson drew a walk, Billy Moran singled, and with two outs, Rocky Colavito got his third home run in all-star competition, slamming a line drive onto the catwalk in left field, and the American League was out in front at this point, 7-1. to one. The National League was not through, however. They came back in the bottom of the seventh on a single by Richie Ashburn, pinch hitting, and a double by Bowling, putting runners at second and third. A bouncer to second got the run in to make it 7-2. to two. In the eighth inning, it was a triple by Ernie Banks and a ground out by Billy Williams to cut the lead to 7-3. to three. But the Tigers picked up two more in the ninth inning. Two errors on one play by Eddie Matthews. Put Bear on second base. He went to third on a wild pitch. Scored on a double by Roger Maris. Roger went to third on a wild pitch. And Colavito coming through with his fourth RBI of the day, a sacrifice fly, made it 9-3. to three. In the ninth inning, Johnny Roseborough closed out the scoring with a home run over the right field fence. So it was nine runs on 11 hits and no errors for the American League. The National League had four runs, 10 hits, and they made four errors. The winning pitcher was Ray Herbert, and the loser was Art Mahaffey of the Philadelphia Phillies. This program is authorized under broadcast rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or any other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as charging admissions for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the commissioner. Well, that wraps up the second All-Star Baseball game of 1962. Be with us again on October the 3rd for the first game of the 1962 World Series, when your host, as today, again, will be the Gillette Safety Razor Company, world leader in shaving, and the Chrysler Corporation, maker of action cars for 1962. Our engineer today has been Harry Alexander. Our director was Johnny Earp. Now this is George Kell along with Jack Quinlan saying so long from Wrigley Field in Chicago.